Hello, hello, hello. Test, test, test. Volume. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> good morning, hey, good morning, good morning, welcome yet to yet another episode of Red Stone Lapis Lazuli, yes, it is I, your host, Pogokido, hey, um, good morning, okay, let's see, switch back, bah, there it is, oh, uh, let me blow my nose for a second, uh, yes, what a week, you know what, sometimes there's some weeks that are, are, it just, Actually, it's been this whole month. This whole month of April has been, like, heavy, heavy. But we kind of knew it was ha- going to come. I, I kind of, I mean, so, so, someone had to expect it. So, hold on. Someone had to have expected it because it's, it's like, absurd. It's, um... What I mean is that, like, oh, god damn, so much has happened. Uh, let's see, did a mass shooting happen this morning? I didn't bother looking. It didn't hit the news if it did. So, <laughs> I didn't see it if there was a mass shooting this morning. Hey, something different. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what else was I looking at, though? Um... <laughs> So the Proud Board trial was going on, and I told you that two defendants of the Proud Boys would go on the stand to to um would go on the stand to to uh defend themselves basically, testify on in their own defense. So the way the the rules work is that sure you can go on the stand and testify in your defense. But then the prosecutor gets, gets to come up afterwards and pick apart whatever it is that you said. <laughs> so that was the deal. So generally, it was a bad idea to, to take the stand in, in your own defense. It's, it's generally a bad idea. I mean, like, especially if, if what you've done is shady. <laughs> Like, it's just a bad idea anyways, because even the most innocent person can look like super guilty in front of a skilled prosecutor. <laughs> like, they can just make you look bad. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter, uh, like, they could get, they could get, like, uh, uh, I don't know. I can't say priest up there because, <laughs> I don't know, who's an inherently good person? I don't, do we even have one? I don't know. Uh, a good person, they can get Jesus Christ up there and be like, that's kind of shady, Jesus. Uh, they can make Jesus, that's, that's, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. A skilled prosecutor could even make Jesus look shady. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of like scary to take the stand, uh, in defense of yourself because they can directly question you you're directly everywhere else you have a representative or someone else they can't actually get to you but but when you testify on your own behalf yeah they can get you and that's what they did they got got ah uh, <laughs> uh, uh, let me show you what i did in minecraft nothing i didn't do anything in minecraft like I don't like I think next week then the new update comes out. Already though, already you can see it's like like improvements. Like there's like a little bit of um oh I don't know how do you say it? Like atmospheric fog. You can't quite see it. Um but it's there. Uh yeah, and I hope it's not too choppy. Uh, I'm, I'm contemplating buying a new video card, but I'm loath to buy one. 
I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't want to buy a new video card, dude. I just got one, and it was it was such a pain to get one to get this one that I don't want to like. Like in order to get the card I had now, I had to I had to sit in in toxic YouTube chats for like weeks on end to listen to alerts for when a, a website a, a store somewhere out there would have cards in stock and then i would have to hurry 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 go to the website and hopefully have already made an account there <laughs> and i can just hit like ref and already have a, a, ta a window open to it so i can hit refresh to to get to the 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 uh the product page and like it says sold out sold out sold out sold out and then hopefully it's there to be like oh buy now and you're like oh bam hit it and then hopefully i get it before everyone else gets it and before the bots get it because there's robots out there that are buying it so they can scalp the card it was awful back then when i bought my card it took like weeks and weeks and then like yeah in the meantime and then like so i would i would fail frequently i mean i failed all the time for weeks on end i failed over and over and over again i failed so what did that mean that meant sitting going back into the toxic youtube chat and sitting there waiting for alerts <laughs> i mean i guess i could just turn off the the chat alerts um I could do that, right? But I didn't. <laughs> I was a dumbass. <laughs> and like, yeah, people in, in YouTube chats are so, some of them are really, really like bad. Like not very, in, not, uh, how do you say? It? Not that they're not smart. It's that they're like advocating for the wrong ideas. Their assumptions are wrong. Ah, it always comes back to that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, see, it's nighttime, right? So you can kind of see how, like, now the lights have a subtle fog about them. So this is, I think, an update to Iris. Iris 1.6.1. One. <laughs> like, what is Iris? Iris is the thing that allows me to, like, have shaders. Uh, like, like, um... It's, it's the layer of programming that allows me to have shaders. The shaders that, that I'm running right now are called rethinking voxels. They And the reason why I like them is because you have sharp shadows and you have um, colored lighting. So um, I can go over there and look at the sharp shadows. Well, I can look at the colored lighting. And yeah, you can kind of see the sharp shadows. So the shadows are, are, are done better <laughs> than any other shader pack. I dig it. And it's colored lighting. So I dig it a lot. I dig it. Uh, but in order to run these, I need to have something called uh, um, another program called Iris, which is, is the thing that lets you run shaders in Minecraft Java on under Fabric. Now, what's Fabric? Fabric is the thing that lets you run mods in Minecraft. <laughs> so the, the people who make Fabric allow for the, 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 for the, allow for the creation of a thing called iris which allows for the creation of a thing called iris uh of rethinking the voxels it's like f three four layers deep of free labor free labor no one's paying like no one's paying them to do this no one paid people to make fabric no one paid people to make iris no one paid people to, to make uh i mean you can if you want to, <laughs> but really, no one's paying anyone to do this. They're just doing it because they like the game. They like Minecraft, and and it's like fun for them to code. I don't know why they do it. I don't know. Their mo I don't know their motivations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On top of this, on top of this, I'm doing another thing called f Faithful Texture Pack. So it increases the resolution of of um the textures to 32 which huge difference right from 8 or 16 to oh no 16 from 16 to 32 huge difference destiny <laughs> and then okay and then wait 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 look okay you see how like the wool has that 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 texture to it it looks like coarse it looks coarse the wool looks coarse that is because of uh this other guy 
named Sonic Ether, <laughs> who once upon a time ah, made a shader pack so amazing that everyone built things around his shader pack. So th this particular uh, th uh, thing I'm using, uh, the faithful texture pack, right? The faithful texture pack, it uses a certain kind of encoding called Seyus, which is stands for Sonic Ethers uh, Unbelievable Shaders, which is goes back to like those amazing shaders that started this whole thing, that like made this explosion. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, there's other shaders, right? But this one, this one shader, like created like all sorts of stuff out of it. Um, so the coarseness comes from from the the code invented. <laughs> for this one shader pack <laughs> called Seyus. Ah! <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. Uh, like, yeah, I don't have reflections right now, but that's okay. All of this is free labor that makes the game of Minecraft look amazing. Like, I, I you can't compare, I mean, you can compare it to the base game, but like, it wouldn't be this, it's just not the same. So Ukraine is holding on to Bakhmut, the, the western edge of it. They're still there. <laughs> so Russia, sure, has taken over bits and bits and bits of Bakhmut. What used to be Bakhmut. There's nothing there anymore, right? <laughs> There's nothing left. There's nothing left. They've destroyed literally everything. So they're fighting over, over like, rubble right now they're just fighting over cover ah! <laughs> fighting over cover because there's no one who lives there anymore everyone was evacuated there's only every all the houses were blown up all the buildings gone all the life that was there is gone russia destroyed everything so sure <laughs> there's there's the rubble there's rubble russia controls the rubble but but ukraine still controls the eastern half of that rubble <laughs> or the western half the western half of the rubble So they and and at what cost Russia at what cost do you know how Russia makes their advances they they get conscripts and poor people or minorities from the east and they throw them into uh with no training and no weapons hardly any weapons they throw them into a group of five and they say hey five five lucky guys you have to run out into that no man's land just run out there and then try to find cover <laughs> and they're like, what, what, okay. <laughs> and so they, they like run out there and they get obliterated every time. So they send out five, six groups of these five guys who get obliterated every time. But every time they get obliterated, it has to come from somewhere. So back here, the, the command guys are like watching to see where this fire, where this obliteration comes from. <laughs> And then they eventually like locate where it's coming from and then concentrate their fire on that point and, and make the Ukrainians re retreat back farther. But they to, to do it, they literally have to sacrifice people over and over and over again. But that's kind of what Russia, that's like what imperialism does to a population. It renders humans to be mere, mere objects. Humans become mere objects for, for the power structure. And the and the and the power structure will throw away human lives to maintain power, just to uh, obtain its objectives. Kind of barbaric, don't you think? I, I wish Ukraine good luck in defending itself, and I'm glad that United States is helping to defend. Why is this one like these? Why are these like flashing? I don't know. Is there anything on there? Under there? No. It's just weird. It's just weird. All right. Anyways, I'm sorry I went off on on whatever. Uh, Ukraine. That's right, because I saw the Ukrainian flag and I gave you an update on how things were going with Ukrainians. So yeah, they're getting influxes of of more more material and more equipment. That's good. What they need are F-16s. 
uh, they need, and they're not even, they're not, and it's funny, they're not even modern fighter jets, guys. Like, F-16s F are pretty old. We use those in, we use those in, in Desert Storm, or, yeah, the Desert Storm War, where we invaded Iraq. Uh, so, so Baghdad had a, a shit ton, a ton, a ton of, of, of SAMs, surface to air missiles. I don't know what kind they were. Like, that's the thing. Desert Storm set up a lot of what's going on today. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, because because uh, Israel was, was getting pummeled from Iraq by Scud missiles. So America sent over... So, so the United States sent over these brand new things called Patriot missiles. They were brand spanking new back then. Everyone was like, "Ooh, new fangled technology!" Back then, <laughs> it was when you fired off a ballistic missile and it would home in on the thing that was a missile coming in and shoot the missile. That was brand new. They hadn't done that before. It was like a new thing, and it, it didn't work sometimes, like a lot of times. And Scud missiles are kind of slow, <laughs> so it was, it was like, "Come on, guys!" <laughs> but it's still back then. It was brand new. It was brand new. So like. They did that, right? Back then. The Scud, the Patriot missiles were brand new uh, back then. And then, I think in what, 90s? And then, um, yeah, and then the United States, so the United States invaded invaded Baghdad, or invaded Iraq, and then we invaded, and then they were going to attack, they wanted to, uh, the, the Americans wanted to attack, like, key parts of Baghdad. But again, mad mounts, uh, tons and tons and tons of, of surface-to-air missiles. So, and to, and so you can't do anything, right? You can't do nothing above Baghdad with surface-to-air missiles everywhere. So what traditionally what you do is you send your ground troops in, and they come close enough for your artillery to like sh destroy the uh, the the, the surface-to-air missile site. You find where they are, and then and you destroy them uh, because you can't fly over them, right? <laughs> you have to use your intel if you have any. To send your ground troops to, to destroy the surface-to-air missiles, and supported by your artillery from far away, and then um, after those are gone, then you can send your, your 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 planes in and establish air superiority, because you have better better. You know, your plane, your your air force is better than their air force when it comes down to it. But you can't use it until you get rid of the surface-to-air missiles. Well, <laughs> the United States says that that's a lot of work. <laughs> United States says that's a lot of work, man. I, I I don't know about like fucking laying siege to Baghdad, fucking bombing their shit out from far away with fucking artillery that's gonna like kill civilians, like regardless. Like, <laughs> like I don't really want to do that. <laughs> how about <laughs> how about this? <laughs> so so instead. He's, America's like, hey guys, I got a fucking shit ton of, of these F-16s. And they got this new fingal technology, which has got to be better than whatever whatever this, the, the Iraqis have. It's got to be way better than whatever they have. Like, we, we, sh we should be able to, like, handle this no problem. Um, right? there, there's no stealth technologies on these, these F-16s. They're just, like, fighter jets. So America's like, we're just gonna like, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna zerg them. We're gonna like, we're not gonna zerg them because we don't want to. We don't want our guys to die. Like never. That's like the thing we don't want. We don't because it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work to train pilots. A, a fuck ton of work. It's like a super investment to to train fighter pilots. <laughs> a super investment. So you don't want to lose. You do not want to lose your fighter pilots. No, 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 no. So. <laughs> But they had this idea, but they don't want to bomb, you know, they don't want to lay siege to Baghdad and, and send artillery against, like, a, a civilian population. That would suck. So so they're like, we're going to do instead, we're just going to, like, send a fuck ton of F-16s. And we're gonna, there's going to be so many F-16s that there's, we're going to out, outdo their, their, we're going to saturate their, their air, air, um, their SAM stuff. We're gonna force them to use up all their missiles because of our so many of our planes that they won't have enough missiles. 
<laughs> what a bad idea. <laughs> what a bad assumption. What a stupid what a what a stupid bad assumption. So the United States sends a fuck ton of F-16s. Just F-16s. No no stealth, just F-16s. To to go and like strike against these military targets that are covered in in SAMs, surface to air missiles, you know, SAM sites that you didn't take out because you haven't like laid siege to the the city with ground troops. Um and with with the idea that there'll be so many of our planes that they'll run out of missiles to shoot out of. No. <laughs> no, that was not true. They did not run out of missiles. So that was shitty. That was shitty for 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 the F16 guys. Because they had to leave. They had to get out of there. Had, I don't think they hardly did anything. Because they were so busy, like, trying not to die. <laughs> for real. For real, dude. There was this one guy. I forgot this one pilot. He, like, dodged, like, five or six missiles. Manually. Manually. In a plane. He dodged six missiles fucking with his fucking hand no he, he had no like i don't i don't know if his like he ran out of cannon measures or whatever like a while ago i don't know what was going on but he hand dodged like all these missiles and then went home <laughs> it was amazing it was amazing like so it was amazing that i, I think the americans lost a few pilots but not that many <laughs> like but it was amazing that they didn't it was amazing it was a stupid thing it was dumb it was a, like a tremendous dumb idea to waste so many human assets so much human potential on such a risky fucking thing it was dumb it was fucking stupid dumb 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 it was stupid <laughs> oh my god it was dumb so with that in mind let's go look at at ukraine <laughs> right now both ukraine and and um russia neither one has air superiority uh because the west keeps giving ukraine uh anti-air and russia has their own anti-air which is really good s s300 missiles which are really really good <laughs> there's better missiles called s400 missiles but but like only Russia has them, and they don't export them. Anyways, so neither side has air superiority. That's why you see a bunch of videos of of helicopters or 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 airplanes. Uh, I'll see a bunch of videos of flying like. Like a hundred feet off the ground, like super, like right next to cars. It's it's insane how low they are to the ground. Why so? Like right next to a highway, and you're like, dude, why why are you like right on the highway next to cars on the ground? You're you're a fucking helicopter. It's to avoid the uh, the radar, the surface to air missiles. Because if you go up any higher, the, they'll see you. If you're trying to, they're trying to blend in with the traffic. Oh, isn't that weird? So and then they get to like within range, and then they come up briefly, just enough to lob, like to lob, literally lob missiles, drop, pop, 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 shoot them in the air, and then they come back down, and then they fly away. <laughs> Because neither side has air superiority. There's these surface-to-air missiles all over the place that will kill you. So, like, I can't. We, the United States can't just send F-16s. We can't just be like, here you go, because we learned <laughs> it will not work. <laughs> They're not stealthy, you, and we're not going to give you stealth stuff. <laughs> so what you have to do is the old-fashioned way, which is... Send your ground troops in to take out on the on the on the uh, on the ground the surface to air missiles the enemy surface to air missiles, and then when, once those are gone, then you can move your air in of bit by bit by bit. So air is just support; it's not actually like what you strike with. They don't have stealth; they they can't just go in there, and we're not gonna give them stealth <laughs> because like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wow. So that that's um Ukraine. Da -da -da. Dude, I didn't even mean to How did I even get into that? I'm not a war expert guy. I just remember stuff from when I was a kid. And then like <laughs> 
And then, like, I remember watching a documentary about that attack on Baghdad, the F-16s. Then I'm like, hey, that makes sense that we don't give them F-16s. Because they wouldn't work. We already tried that. <laughs> we already tried it. We already tried it. It didn't work. It was, it was, it was a catastrophe. Okay. Um... Holy shit. What, so, Proud Boy Trials. That's right. I was getting back to the United States. Proud Boy Trials. So, the two guys took the stand in their own defense. Look at me. Look at me. Like, how did I come back to that? That's, that's so funny. I'm, I'm messed up in the head. All right. So, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Our, uh, Proud Boy Trial. Now, I, I was saying it was a really bad idea to take the stand in your own defense because a skilled prosecutor can make you look so bad, can make you look bad no matter what. It doesn't matter how good you are. A skilled prosecutor can make you look bad. And I was saying, <laughs> with a skilled prosecutor can even make Jesus look shady on the stand. <laughs> so, Jesus. Uh, trying to overthrow the government, are you? <laughs> and Jesus is like, no. <laughs> Get, he's, he's like, you call yourself a king, right? King of heaven and shit like that, right? Right? <laughs> and Jesus is like, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but... And he doesn't say that. Does, does, does that, Jesus ever call himself king? I don't know. I have to go back and read. I, I, don't, I, I don't even know. Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe maybe the writers made him say that. Ah! <laughs> That's funny. Ah! Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> He's like, nah, dude. Give give to Caesars what is Caesars? Oh shit. Ah! <laughs> Render unto God what is God's. Ah, uh, that, that's right. That's how it goes. Okay. So it's like, yo, dude, I'm not trying to overthrow the government. I'm saying pay your taxes. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, a skilled prosecutor could make G even Jesus look bad on the stand. So, so it was a bad idea for for Zach Rail and for for uh, I forgot his first name, Dan Daniel. Pizzola, Daniel Pizzola, to take the stand in their own defense. Why? Well, number one, they're fucking guilty, super guilty. What are they guilty of? Trying to overthrow the government. Yes, sir, that's treason. <laughs> they're guilty of treason. <laughs> so they took, so they they took the, the the stand in their own defense while they're guilty of treason, and and the thing is, they don't know it. They don't believe it. Now that's weird. That's weird. Why don't they believe it? Like the process. So, so after the prosecutor, like here, let, let's go over. Let's look again real quick. What happened? Well, here we go. First, first um, Proud Boys. P B P B P B A B C D E F G. There we go. Proud Boy Chat 1. So, this is the first Proud Boy, uh, or this is one of the things, uh, pieces of evidence, right? Government evidence between Tyro and Biggs. Uh, so, Enrique Taro is also one of the Proud Boys on trial. He didn't testify his own, in his own defense. Why? Because he's like super guilty. So check them out. These guys are talking to each other. These guys are like leaders, key key figures in the in the the um, in the overthrow of the government. Biggs and Taro. They remember the whole idea is that they coordinated with Donald Trump to stop the transfer of power, and to ensure that Donald Trump held on to the presidency. It was a conspiracy. It was an up. It was a plan. They had a plan to take over the Capitol, in order to stop the the government from from. Power from from changing hands. So, um, on a Zoom call with these fucks. So he's referring to all these other people, all the other Proud Boy people, right? 
And he's like, I think I got them. He's he's like, I got them. He he's the leader, right? He's saying he's the leader of them, <laughs> and they will go to D.C. to help stop the transfer of power. Joe Biggs is also part of it, right? <laughs> Either way, Joe Biggs is part of the leadership of the Proud Boys, is what this is saying. Enrico Tero. We've been that for a long time. The drinking stuff helped mask and recruit. Helps mask and recruit. Key key point here, right? Do you see? Enrico Tero admits that the whole point of the drinking and the macho macho stuff is to mask. They're hiding behind this macho thing in order to recruit for this event. It acts as a filter. Because they're looking for the kind of frat guy kind of guy that would go to like drinking, that'd be into like drinking and being tough and rough with, with people. That's exactly the kind of guy they're looking for. And, and, and um, so they mask it with that, but then they're also looking for people to pull into the Proud Boys to make this event bigger and bigger and bigger to make sure that the tra they can stop the transfer of power. It's all planned. <laughs> See, some chapters don't leave the, their bars and homes <laughs> because some chapters don't get it. So, do you see? Some chapters don't understand the, uh, the concept of the Proud Boys, which is to serve Donald Trump, which is to stop the transfer of power. They don't leave their bars and homes. They get stuck on the, the mask, which is, oh, we're a party, party drinking fraternity group. No, <laughs> they're they're a shadow army for Donald Trump. <laughs> Joe Biggs re re complains, but we recruit losers who want to drink. Let's get radical and get real men. What's he mean? <laughs> What's wh what group does he want to recruit from? <laughs> uh. No, like she's saying, no one looks at us from our side and sees a drinking club. That's the, the key thing, right? They present, they put out the idea that they're only a drinking club. That's all they do is drink and fraternitize or whatever and like be a bunch of fucking male chauvinist pigs. That's all, <laughs> that's, that's all they fucking do. That, that's what they present. That's what they push out. Remember, remember, uh, oh man, this goes back to like, is it George Herbert Mead? Or or was it uh, Coolidge? I don't remember. It's been a long time, and I haven't actually pulled it up, so I just kind of pulled it out of my ass. But uh, um, but the me and the I, what what they are inside and what they present. I mean, you could go back even further. You go back to Odysseus, right? <laughs> Who am I? Oh yeah, nobody. I'm my nobody. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to put out there. We're nobody. We're just drinking, dudes. That's all we're doing. We're just drinking. No. <laughs> nobody from this side of it thinks that that's all that it's about. Oh, we're just drinking. That's what you present. And that's and this is what confirms uh, that it is, they see men who stand up and fight. Because that's their point. We need to portray a more masculine vibe. They need to get less 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 people addicted to alcohol, and more people <laughs> on board with overthrowing the government. And he confirms it by saying, "Just bought my ticket from January fifth to seventh. Why? And this is December twentieth, twenty twenty. Why? 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 Why would Joe Biggs <laughs> book his ticket?" For the time Donald Trump has been calling people to go there for. Uh, uh, <laughs> because it was part of the plan. It's all, it's all part of the plan. They had a plan. The leadership had a plan. All these guys had a plan. It's a conspiracy. It was a conspiracy to overthrow the government. Okay, I already did this one. Okay. Oh, wait. So, per attorney of USA McCullough, Tara, Tara and Biggs formed the conspiracy on 12-19-2020, the day of the Trump will be wild tweet, in chats, 
and chats like this one. Let's get radical. Let's get real, man. So the government argues the moment Donald Trump and Tyro and Biggs came into a conspiracy together was when Donald Trump said, everyone go be at the at, – I'm having a speech at this time. Everyone be there. It will be wild. Donald Trump called it, and these guys said, oh, we hear you, Donald Trump. We're there. Remember when Donald Trump said, stand by and stand back? <laughs> he was talking to the Proud Boys. That was like the recruitment thing. And then this is that's when he mobilized them. He said, all right, my shadow army, now you're going to go to D.C. on January 6th to this speech. <laughs> when, but the thing is, they didn't even go to the speech. It wasn't even at the, about. It wasn't even about the speech. Some of them went to the speech, but they were not there for the speech. They were there to to stop the transfer of power. So they're more toward the capital. They're in fact they're at the capital before the speech ended, already causing problems, well, or getting ready to cause problems. Okay, defendants Nord Nordine and Ryle, Zach Ryle, Rail join the conspiracy the next day, <laughs> on the 20th. As do Donahue, John Stewart, and Eric Wolkind. When Ty Tyrio creates the MSO MOSD Leaders Group and adds the Ministry of Self Defense Leaders Group and adds those individuals to it. Okay. Bertino is treated as joining the conspiracy on 1223 when he's added to uh, the uh, Ministry of Self-Defense Leaders chat. So the people in the Ministry of Self-Defense, that's like the, the leaders of the Proud Boys of this conspiracy. They're the ones who are in the know about what's going on. Bertino is treated as – okay, yep – Pezzola joins the, the conspiracy by one by uh, January 2nd, 2021, when he's added to the, the, the MOSD chats per, per uh, go the government. So remember I told you it was a bad idea for them to, to accept the cross-examination? So this is Zach Rail. He he's one of the guys who testified to his own self defense. First of all, Brandy Buckman has been live tweeting it, and she's amazing. And also, also who's out who's out of the person? Um, Roger Parloff. Those two people have been live tweeting the the uh, the trial, and it's really 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 interesting because to watch them both because they see different things. It's so cool. It's so cool. I feel like I have stereo vision. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm getting more coffee. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so Zach Rail, what a what a so so this guy Zach Rail is like, oh yeah, I'm I'm super proud of what we've done, right? So these proud boys literally are proud of what they've done because they literally believe in their mission which is to reinstate Donald Trump. And what is that mission tied to, essentially? White supremacy. I mean, it's essentially white supremacy. It's white supremacy. They mask it by saying b drinking club, and by saying sh Western chauvinists, but what they mean is white supremacy. <laughs> like, there's plenty of, of like, of history of, of queerness and gay people and, and transgender and transsexual and all sorts of stuff in history, in Western history, in Western history. But you, but those guys choose not to see it. They just use that as scapegoats. So, like... Like they're not actually a Western drinking club. They're 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 a, a Nazi like brown shirt. <laughs> they're Nazi brown shirts. They're essentially Nazi brown shirts. What am I talking about? Nazi brown shirts are like the 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 enforcement arm of the Nazi party. <laughs> they just like like the not Hitler would say something and there wouldn't actually be like a written command. There wasn't an actual formal like agreement between Hitler and the brown shirts to like do this but whenever Hitler said something bad about a certain enemy the brown shirts would go and beat them up or if if, or if Hitler's enemies would like stage a, a, a protest Hitler would say something and the brown shirts would come and beat up the the, the opposition to make them go away <laughs> like 
they they were a bunch of thugs. They went around and beat up people on Hitler's command. Same thing with the Proud Boys. The same thing. Except it went even farther because these guys tried to over, literally overthrow the government. L- like literally. I don't know how to make it more like explicit. Like that was the whole point. The whole point of January 6th was to stop the transfer of power. To stop Joe Biden from becoming president and making sure that that Donald Trump remained president. Do I still have that that clip of Pompeo who, when he admits it? Like when he he predicts it like ahead of time. He's like, yeah, there's not going to be a transfer of power. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Here's where he floats the coup, the idea of the coup. Is the State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team? And if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk to national security? There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. All right, we're we're ready. The the world is watching what's taking place here. We're going to count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out pretty clearly. The world should have every confidence that the transition necessary to make sure that the State Department is functional today, successful today, and successful with the president who's in office on January 20th, a minute afternoon, will also be successful. So, in other words, did you hear that little like ah, laugh that Pompeo did? Ah, he cracks. He cracked. He cracked for a little, little bit. Because he didn't commit. He, he said the exact opposite. Ah, he said, fuck you. I'm, it's going to be Trump. <laughs> and, he, and, he like, and, he, and he never, ever, ever said like, the possibility of Biden ever taking, taking office. And what date was this? Was this after? Um, I don't know if this is after he already lost the election. I think he already lost the election. Uh, or maybe not. I don't know. Let me, let me, I don't remember when, what date this was. State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team, and if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk? So yeah, Biden already won the election. He already won. Biden already won the election. <laughs> this is like like the twelve twenty or something. This is like after the election, it's all done. It's all counted. It's done. It's done. It's done. And Mike Pompeo is still saying that it's not going to happen. So. so I don't know the date, but the, the, the idea is that the election already happened, and it's already done, and Biden already won. Is the State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team? And if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk to national security? So the whole point is that it already happened. The, the, uh, the, trend, the, the vote already happened, and... Um, at this point, there's no transition team from Donald Trump to go meet the Biden transition team to help to help. Like they refuse to talk. They're not even talking to the Biden team about about going taking power. So the reporter's like, "Dude, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? Like, what are you doing? How ready are you to to tr- like? How ready are you guys to transfer par- power because you're not talking to one another? And at what point does this become a a, a security problem? <laughs> Since you're not like transferring power, <laughs> when does this become an issue, motherfuckers? That you're not transferring power <laughs> straight to his face, right? They ask him straight to his face. So every this guy like sees very very clearly what's going on. Biden already won biden's team's asking hey dudes why don't you talk to us your team is not fucking talking to biden's team (laughs) what's going on at what point do we say hey you you guys are trying to overthrow the government (laughs) and what does pompeo say there will be a smooth transition to a second trump administration (laughs) what Biden already won, guy. What are you talking about? Why, why, why would there be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration? Why? Biden already won the election. Did, don't, didn't you hear the news, dude? What, what? Do we need to catch you up here? What's going on? What are you talking about? Like, look at his face. He's, he's super stressed out. He knows he's been caught lying. <laughs> Someone called him out, and he has to, like, eat shit. And he's, and he's eating shit right now. He ate shit by saying, oh, yeah, we're just going to have a second Trump transition. He's naked right now. He's naked. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> he's got no cover. And so he's just going with it, right? He's doubling down. 
right? We're, we're ready. The, the world is watching what's taking place here. We're going to count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out pretty clearly. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out. <sighs> that guy knows he's fucked, and he's doing it all wrong. He knows he's doing it all wrong. The plan was to delay the uh, the um, the election or to stop the transfer of power long enough for the senators, the, the Confederate senators and Confederate um, House members to, to say, hey, we don't we we don't believe the votes from um, we don't believe the votes from these battleground states that, that we lost. We don't believe them that, that Biden won. We don't believe them. We're not going to count your electors. And then these people say they're electors. So why can't we just use them? Because they're pro-Trump. <laughs> and then, then they'll be like, well, maybe we'll kick it to the Supreme Court, which, as we know, is already stacked toward, toward uh, Republicans because Clarence Thomas. We already know that would end up in a, in a Trump administration. Um, or <laughs> they could say, well, then we'll just kick it to the House of Representatives, um, which, as we know, they already won. That's why that's what we're dealing with right now. They had already won the House of Representatives, so in other words, they would choose Donald Trump again. So they had multiple avenues of overthrowing the election. They were ready. They were not going to follow the Constitution at all. The whole point of of January sixth that that this hadn't January sixth hadn't happened yet. So he was. <laughs> so, uh, the whole point was 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 to um to uh use all three to to overthrow the government through multiple i mean it's amazing that the united states didn't fall on january 6th i'm i'm kind of amazed <laughs> i'm kind of amazed clearly the world should have every confidence that the transition necessary to make sure that the state department is functional today successful today and successful with the president who's in office on january 20th a minute afternoon will also be successful. Yeah, is the, state the guy, fuck, fuck Pompeo. The Mike Pompeo is like evil. Oh, fuck that fascist motherfucker. Oh. Okay, yeah, so anyways. That, so, so what happened? So there was this conspiracy between Donald Trump, <laughs> Mike, Pompeo, Mike, Mike Pompeo knew about it and he was helping. So this is conspiracy with Donald Trump, um, and the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. So the the Oath the Proud Boys are trying to play it off like it was it was um, the uh, the Oath Keepers' idea to do it. That's what a lot of them tried to do. Play it off like it was the Oath Keepers' idea. That it wasn't the Proud Boys. We just got swept up with what the Oath Keepers were doing. But it's not the, that. That's not the case. They had their own idea. They had their own se separate thing, separate from the uh, Oath Keepers. It just happened to to, to converge. <laughs> so, so. So, dude was cross-examined, right? He took the stage on uh, uh, Zachary took the stage on his own behalf. Um, he said a bunch of stuff. He said like, first the prosecutor's like, "Hey, I have this picture of you, like with your mask down, but but still wearing your stuff at January 6th. Is that you?" And he's like, yep. He's like, all those, and he pointed out all these things: your helmet, your your goiter, your your goggles, your jacket, like all these things on 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 him. And and Zach said, yep, that's all me. And I identify all those things. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh shit. Oh! <laughs> and then afterwards, after right after Zach, right after Rail said that, right after he said that, he was like, hey. I have all these pictures of you doing hella illegal shit. Uh, I have you attacking protesters. I have you moving barriers. I have you going places you're not supposed to be, contrary to what you said. Everything you said. And and look at the picture. The picture is it's the same jacket. It's the same jacket. It's the same helmet. It's the same goggles. It's the same goiter pattern. It's the same gloves. It's the same right, right, right. And then and then once once uh, Zach realized what was happening, he was like. <gasps> 
um, um, I don't know. I don't. I I can't tell. It's it's blurry. It's it's too far away. I don't I don't know. It could be. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Right after he identified himself, right afterwards, when his when he started seeing himself doing bad things, he suddenly f- couldn't tell that w- if it was him or not. <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> okay, you fool. <laughs> and then, and then they have a video, a video of him, because that's him, right? They already identified. They already got all the parts of him, and then him moving through the crowd. They have they have video of him from so many different angles and police officers. It's it's dumb. It's so dumb. So they have it all of this right, and they have this bit of him reaching out with a, a pepper spray toward police officer and shooting the police officer with pepper spray. Like right there, dude. They got him right there. Uh, 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 and then he was saying, "Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's me." Ah! <laughs> and then he's like, "I don't know if that's pepper spray." Ah! He's like, "It could be a camera." Ah! Ah! He's like, "What about the stuff flying out of it?" <laughs> and Zach's like, "I don't know. Maybe it's his backpack or streams. Maybe he's shooting like silly, silly string." Ah! 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 <laughs> and he's like, are you sure? Are you sure? So they played the video real slow. <laughs> the, 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 the jury got a real, real good look at, at Zach walking along and being like, fuck you, motherfuckers. <laughs> and Zach, Zach is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> stupid. The, these proud boys, man. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then, like, another thing is, like, well, he's, like, so they're, like, how did you get in the Capitol? And Zach's, like, I was looking for my friend. Ah! <laughs> really? You're just looking for your friend? He's, like, yeah, and I just kind of ha- kind of got swept up with the crowd. It was by accident. I didn't mean to. You didn't mean to? You didn't mean to, like, storm the Capitol? You didn't mean to go inside? Really? Really? <laughs> like, let's look at the Capitol. How do you accidentally climb up all those stairs past those barriers past a bunch of fucking police who are like you have to battle to get there fighting pepper spray how do you accidentally do that how 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 do you accidentally do that how's that an accident how is that accidental (laughs) how do you climb all those steps accidentally (laughs) i can see going down those steps accidentally but i can't see going up the steps accidentally (laughs) (laughs) ah shit (laughs) incredulous Ah. (laughs) and then look here he's like oh look i took a picture that's his picture that he took at the top how do you accidentally get to that point when you can take a picture like that it's not accidental dude he's fucking lying he's full of shit so he's he's shooting himself full of holes like he's shooting his credibility full of holes all over the place that the government has all this evidence because this is the most videotaped insurrection in the history of the world okay so let's look at like the whole thing play out or a part a part of it Wait, hold on. Do you see those guys in military fucking gear and helmets and like gas masks and like fatigues? <laughs> like these guys are just for like fucking combat. And and Zach Riddell's like, oh yeah, it, lo- it looks like a protest to me. <laughs> that looks like a protest. Oh my god. Have you ever been to like I don't know. 
a protest <laughs> for civil rights, you know, not not to overthrow the government, but like for civil rights to uh, help people. Have you ever been? Fuck, dude. If you ever, 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 ever been, you've ever been to a protest for civil rights as opposed to overthrow the government of the United States. Vast, radically different, radically, radically different, radically different, like, vibe. <laughs> but Zach Rail is calling this a regular, normal protest. He doesn't see anything unusual. Oh, my God. He has to, right? He has to. Because, like, he, he's fucking guilty. He knows it. He knows he's guilty. He has, so he has to lie through, he has to say ridiculous shit. He has to say stupid stuff. Because if he doesn't, he goes to prison. And he's if he doesn't, then he's like, yeah, yeah, you, you're right. I, I engaged in, in a conspiracy to overthrow the government. You got me. Uh-huh. No, he can't say that. Because if he does, then he's like, he goes to prison. <laughs> and all his buddies go to prison. He can't say it. So instead, <laughs> for the slimmest hope that the, he can convince the jury otherwise, he has to say stupid-ass shit and hope, hope that the jury is real dumb. Or there's a Nazi on the jury somehow. That's that's his only choices. That's his only ha chance. So he's got to say stupid shit like, does this look like a normal protest to you, Mr. Zach Rail? And Zach Rail says, yeah, it looks normal to me. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's keep watching. This is a revolution. Like, the fuck? Who says that to police? Look at that, look at that. Look how coordinated it is to, that they push through. Look at those, the pepper spray. They use the flags to attack. Look at that shield. Oh my God, there's the shield. There's the shield. Why is that shield important? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back a little tiny bit. Why is that shield important? Do -do -do -do. Oh, I love, this is so cool, going backwards. Oh, there it is. You see it? You see, you see that? That's a right shield. It's a clear plastic right, right shield. Right there. You see it. Da, 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 da. Whoa. That clear plastic right shield held by that long haired scruffy guy, gray, black and gray hair guy. That shield is going to be used to bash open one of the only un re unreinforced windows in the Capitol. All the other windows in the Capitol were reinforced, like against like hardcore shit. You can't just bash them in. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. <laughs> you could not bash in the windows. Only a few windows were only like one. <laughs> only like one window was unreinforced where you could you could bash it in. They went to the one. They went to the one window where you could bash it in. They went to the one window that you could bash it in, and they they and Zach Rail used that shield that he stole from a cop in order to to get past the defenses of the police and get inside the Capitol, which allowed everyone else into the Capitol. That is the breach. That's what started like the collapse of the whole Capitol. If it wasn't for that collapse right there, they would have held them out. They would have held it. But they bashed in the one of the only unreinforced windows to get into the Capitol. Does this look like a normal protest to use Mr. Zach Rail? And Zach Rail says, oh yeah, it looks like a normal protest. Really? Really, Zach Rail? Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Zach Rail, like, gets his credibility destroyed on the stand. Like, it's obvious he's lying through his teeth. Super obvious he's lying. And that he's... And, and even when it was his turn on the stand, before the the prosecutor got to him, he he could not stop himself from saying how great the Proud Boys were and how what they did was justified. He couldn't help it. He couldn't help it. He his his his, his treason could not help but come out. He is more loyal to the Proud Boys than he is to the United States. 
Well, and the Proud Boys are loyal to Donald Trump. So he's more loyal to Donald Trump than he is to the United States. Who's Donald Trump loyal to? Vladimir Putin. Uh. <laughs> okay. So there's, so there's, there's, um, there's Zach Rail. But the other guy who took the stand in his own defense was like Daniel P P Pelosa. Uh, I spelled it wrong. Oh, no, no, this is a different guy. Uh, so we have this, this video. <laughs> and in this video, this is the guy. Who underneath this is a is a police officer who got dragged by the crowd and knocked over. <laughs> that is not pepper spray. That is wasp. That is that is wasp poison. <laughs> so this guy is using wasp poison to shoot at the police in order to blind them. Or maybe I don't know what I don't know. Maybe that's a cop over there. Ah, I don't know. I can't tell. I don't know what's going on. But I do know there's a cop under there. Underneath here's like there's a cop. And then when the cop fell, Daniel Pizzola stole his shield, the shield away from the cop. Now Daniel Pizzola tried to play it off as if someone else took the shield from the cop, and then Daniel Pozzola took the shield from that other guy. So it wasn't Daniel Pozzola who stole the shield from the cop, it was some other guy. And besides, Daniel Pozzola, after everything was over, gave the shield back to the cop. After he already used it to bash in the window, and after everyone was getting kicked out, he gave the shield back to another cop. Not the same cop, a different cop. <laughs> So he's trying to say, I didn't steal it. I just borrowed it. And he didn't even say I borrowed it. He's like, I didn't steal it from the cop. I stole it from a guy who stole it from the cop with the intention of giving it back to the police. Ah! Ah! You, like, literally, you have to say, you have to say stupid shit if, if you're going to be on the stand like that. So, yeah, Daniel Pozzola wants to say there was never a conspiracy. He was never involved. There was never a, an agreement to, to, to stop the government. He wants to say all this stuff. And he wants to say that he never stole the, the, the shield. He never stole it. That's what he wants to say. But yes, he did, dude. We have a video of you stealing the shield. And this guy is helping you. This guy back here is helping you. <laughs> you can hold on to the shield while he'll pick you up. So you don't need to let go of the shield in order to stand up. Thanks, buddy. Try, help me for helping me overthrow the government. Mm. This is important, guys. I don't know if the the mainstream media is telling you this stuff or showing you this stuff. This is important, though. This is our this is our 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 country. This is the, on January sixth. These guys literally tried to overthrow our government, our democracy. Not just our government. Not I'm not saying I'm fighting for government because it's not really for government. It's a specific kind of government I'm fighting for. That is democracy, democratic government, democracy. The the people had made a decision, and these motherfuckers tried to stop them, stop the people from enacting their decision, and they tried to tried to disregard our choice and in in uh, and uh, implant their own decision, their own person. They literally and like how many how many Americans gave their lives in defense of democracy so that we could have this experiment in which we dilute the power into the people so that they can choose how many people died for that and these guys disgraced every single one of those people who died fighting for our democracy every single one of them every single one of the people who fight even who didn't die but who suffer and fight for democracy. All those millions of people who, who died and fought for democracy. These guys dis, disrespected by trying to overthrow our government. And they say the stupidest shit to justify it. They say the stupidest shit. And they expect us to, to believe it. Victory smoke in the Capitol, boys. This is fucking awesome. I knew we could take this motherfucker over and just tried hard enough. I knew we could 
take over this motherfucker. I knew we could. I knew we could. Our plan was going to be a success. Our plan to take over the capital. I knew we could. I knew we could. I knew it was an idea. It was a plan thought of ahead of time. Thought of ahead of time. It wasn't spurious. It wasn't spur of the moment. It wasn't just uh, an idea. Or it wasn't just something that happened by accident, spontaneously, organically. No. It was a plan. It was a plan. Does he look terrified? He says he took that shield in order to protect his head because he was afraid of getting shot in the head. That's why he took the shield, because he was terrified. Does he look terrified to you? Does he look afraid? That's Daniel Pozzola with the white power sign with the stolen shield saying that he's, he fears for his life. He's afraid for his life. That's the justification for having the shield. He's afraid for his life. This motherfucker. <sighs> so... It's important that you realize what's going on here and what they're saying. Because <laughs> it's the dumbest thing ever. Here, here, now, here's what, here's what they said on the, stand, on the stand. Pizzola says the man must have dropped me. And when Kenneth, the, uh, the, uh, the U.S. government asks if it looks like he has full possession, he says, yes, it appears it does. So, when you look at this picture, Pizzola is saying that the man here uh, was holding, stopping him. I don't know. I don't know what he was saying. <laughs> but, but he's got the shield. <laughs> oh, um, so, so he says that the man that was holding, holding um, Pizzola up... Pozzola says, that's the man who's holding the shield. Actually, actually. Pozzola's not holding the shield. The man holding Pozzola is holding the shield. And, he, and the attorney says, really? Really? Is that really what it looks like? <laughs> and then he says, all right, what, what happens after you get the shield? He says, I worked my way back into the crowd. He says, yep. Did you give the shield back at that point? Nope. Did you cover your head? Because you, because the argument is he took the shield because he was afraid for his life and he was afraid he would get shot in the head. He said, yes, oh yes, I did cover my, my, my head with the shield. I remember bullets hitting right by where my head would have been. So miraculously, Pozzola says he used the shield to cover his head because bullets hit the shield, his head, right where his head would have been. If it wasn't for the shield that he had, he would have been shot in the head. That's his argument. So he said right after this happened, right after he got up. He said, oh, oh, oh no, no, not right after I got up. He said, well, what about, let's, let's get a little more specific. When did it happen? And Pozzola cuts in and says, oh, yeah, I, I can't really, really remember when that happened. Because he's lying. He's lying. The reason why he can't say when that happened, when he covered his head to block the bullets that, that hit the shield, the reason why he can't say when it happened, because he's making it up, because he's lying. There's, govern there's video of the whole thing. All he has to do is point out when it happened, and they'll, they'll, they'll move the video and say, oh, oh, there you are. Yep, that's what you're doing. Okay. But he can't do it because it never happened because he's lying. His whole justification for taking the shield is a lie. He didn't take the shield to protect his head because he was afraid for his life. He took the shield because he wanted to, to like to further the, the, the conspiracy to enter into the capital, to delay the, the proceedings, to stop the transfer of power on instruction from Donald Trump. Okay. So, 
that's why the, the attorney is like working into him. He's like, you know, when when did you do it? When did you do it? At what time? And he's saying, look, I can't be clear. <laughs> I can't tell you when, right? I can't tell you when it happens. Why? Because he's lying. The whole thing, he's lying. That's why that's why I'm telling you. It doesn't matter who you are. When you take the stand, a skilled prosecutor can make even Jesus look guilty. <laughs> What else do I got here? Anyways, so for me, I think it's, it's important that I give you this information. I don't know how many other people are out there like are paying attention to the Proud Boy trial, if they even know what's going on. You can look it up on the internet. There's there's journalists who are covering it, but they're not mainstream journalists. They're not. You're not going to see them on the nightly news. You're not going to read about them in the newspaper. So I don't know. Who knows? Who even knows that, that there's that there's a there's a, a treason trial going on right now? Who even knows? <laughs> like, remember January sixth? Remember when they tried to overthrow the government? Yeah, that's still going on. Donald Trump literally conspired to have his his brown shirts invade the Capitol with the idea of stopping the transfer of power. It's a conspiracy. It's a, it's a coup. It was a coup attempt, and they're gonna try again. So, but these guys are on trial for it right now. So, uh, da, da, da. the thing is, is that like I'm telling you, because they're not gonna hear. Nobody's gonna hear it from anywhere, anywhere else. I mean, maybe if 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 you're like savvy to it, but like I don't know how many people are savvy to it. This is sort of like I'm explaining this to my mom, <laughs> like to be honest, <laughs> because she would never ever ever see this otherwise. She would never know about the Proud Boy trial. Like when I first was watching the live streams of of the insurrection as it was going on, the like as it was unfolding in front of my eyes i called my mom on the phone and i told her look there's an insurrection and i remember the tone of her voice i remember the tone of her voice it was almost automatic it wasn't even conscious i don't think she was even conscious of it but i said look, mom there's like an insurrection they're trying to overthrow the government and then and then she said in that tone no they're not that tone that tone that tone came out no, they're not. I can I remember it, that tone. To something I was literally watching with my eyes unfolding. And I got gas I was getting gaslit. I was like, holy fuck. I, I it freaked me out. I got angry and I like had to hang up because I couldn't talk to my mom at that point. <laughs> it was literally unfolding in front of my eyes and my mom was was gaslighting me. And like, was it conscious? I don't know. Maybe it was like an implanted thing because it was like automatic and it was that tone. It was that tone. It was automatic and it was that tone. And it was unconscious. Because I don't she doesn't remember it. <laughs> she doesn't remember it. So I think it's important, like, like, yeah, in a way, I'm kind of, if, if I don't talk about this, then my mom's not going to know. And my mom is like, you know, talks to her friends. <laughs> and then her friends have no idea what my mom's talking about because her friends are watching Fox News. Well, what, why is that's a huge, 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 huge problem. Why is that a huge problem? Well, we found out already through the Dominion, through Dominion, um, uh, the Dominion like settlement. Dominion settled so that, or Fox News settled so that they wouldn't have to go through discovery. Discovery is that process by which you have to show all your emails and stuff. And that in that process, we found out that Fox News knew that that Donald Trump was full of shit, but they ran with the story anyways. <laughs> so that makes it look real bad for 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 um, Fox News. And they were going to go to, to trial to see if it was malicious, if they did it on purpose, which they have proof they did do it on purpose. <laughs> so Fox News is like, you know what? We're just going to pay you to shut up. <laughs> and they did. They paid like 700, more than $700 million to Dominion to settle the lot of lawsuit so they didn't have to show their emails. Well, guess what? That's kind of the same thing that happened to to um, to Elon Musk. Elon Musk didn't want to buy Twitter. <laughs> but during – and then so Twitter sued. So during during discovery, 
it, it showed how dumb Elon Musk was. And it became public how dumb Elon Musk was. <laughs> so, so Elon Musk is like, you know what? <laughs> Let's not do this. <laughs> I'll just fucking buy your company and shut the fuck up. <laughs> We're not going to do the discovery. No one has to know. <laughs> so Twitter's like, okay, thanks. And they took $44 billion. And then the day after, uh, the CEO was fired by, by, um, by uh, Elon Musk. It was so funny. <laughs> And the guy's like, I don't care, I got paid. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay. So Fox News went through something similar with Dominion. <laughs> they they all their all their dirty laundry came out and they're like, you know what? We don't want to let people know our dirty laundry. We're just gonna pay to shut you up. But that's not gonna work, dudes, because there's another group called like Smart Smartmatic or something. Another group is doing the same thing. It's suing Fox News for defamation. Same, same, same thing. So, but they have a lot more money, so the payout's gonna be a lot bigger. <laughs> like Fox News is still gonna, you know, it's not gonna stop Fox News from doing their bullshit because that's literally their business. Fo the business of Fox News is spreading disinformation and lies. Literally, that's their business. So they're not gonna stop. <laughs> they just have to like squeeze more out of 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 their of their business partners to get more to recoup the costs but they're not going to stop it's not going to discourage them from from doing the fascism they're all they're fully on board with the fascism because they're owned by Rupert Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch is fully on board with overthrowing democracy because why because democracy is an impediment to billionaires billionaires want to do stuff but they can't because these fucking democracy stop them they want to just wreck shit but they can't because democracy stop them every time so they want to get rid of democracy all billionaires all billionaires want to get to get rid of democracies everyone wants to talk about george soros but george soros isn't really the one who's doing the the getting rid of democracy that's like rupert murdoch <laughs> that's a billionaire you should be angry at <laughs> that guy he, he like causes so much suffering so um I didn't get a picture of the guy. It should have. I should have got a picture of him. Can I get a picture of him real quick? Let me see if I can get a picture of him real quick. Because it's sad. It's sad. Fox. Man shoots kid wrong address. I, I need the arraignment. What's his name? There we go. I need to see the picture. I don't know who that is. I should have got it because he, he looks like he looks like grandpa. He looks like a grandpa that watches TV all day. He's hunched over like that. Like he like he's in a recliner all day and, and all he does is watch TV. And the TV he was watching was Fox News. I'm sorry, I'm I'm doing this. I I need I want to find that picture. I should have did it sooner. Here, just. Ralph Yarl. Ralph Yarl. Yeah, there it is, Ralph Yarl. That's his name. Oh, this guy got shot. Who? <laughs> That's the kid who got shot. Ralph Yarl got shot. There it is. Save it. Guy who shot Ralph Yarl. Okay. That's the guy who shot Ralph Yarl. Man, that guy looks like he's just an old grandpa who like watches Fox News all day. 
<laughs> like <laughs> the grandson of the homeowner who shot Ralph Yarl says his grandfather had become consumed with watching conservative and following conspiracy theories built on misinformation. His actions are his responsibility. Ralph deserves justice. <laughs> So this guy, consumed by Fox News, constantly watching, um, getting filled with, with hate and disinformation, shot a, a kid who went to the wrong address. He just knocked on the wrong door. He just, he just knocked on the wrong door, and they, they, he shot him through the door. Um, why would that happen? Why would that happen? Why would a guy who watches Fox News all day shoot somebody through the the door well if you check out who they trust pew research recently did a a a, 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 a study a, a survey to ask how trustworthy do you rate the news reported by the following broadcast print or digital media organizations and this is republicans and the, yeah, the, yeah there's other ones u.s citizens adult citizens and democrats but when you look the one they trust the most is the Weather Channel. Ah, the Weather Channel. And blah, 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 Fox News. So even more than the Weather Channel, they trust Fox News. So Republicans, like that old man, trust Fox News more than anything else. And he, that guy watched Fox News all the time. So of Fox News, who do they trust the most? Oh, what's this one? Oh, I just did that one. Oh no, I lost it. I didn't mean I got the same one twice. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Well, of that of Fox News, they trust Tucker Carlson the most. And uh, as we know, Tucker Carlson is is just spewing disinformation. So since they trust Tucker Carlson the most and he's the one spewing disinformation, they're utterly filled with fear and they do stupid things like shoot people through the door. That's why Fox. That's why Rupert Murdoch is is a danger, because he he owns Fox News and he's the one that makes this happen. Rupert Murdoch is a is an enemy of the United States. So there's Tucker Carlson parroting Russian disinformation. So remember when that guy that 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 stupid traitor in the National Guard stole a bunch of documents from the United States and then uploaded it to his Discord server? Remember that? He wanted to help Vladimir Putin end the war in, in Ukraine. So he uploaded U.S. secrets to, to a Discord server and then Russian spies took those U.S. secrets and then doctored them, changed them to flip around the casualty rate. Because remember I told you that the, that the Russians were doing like crazy stuff. They would, they would throw in people into the meat grinder and just have them die just to get them have – just so they can figure out where the shots are coming from. They would just they, – so the, it's like a, like a seven to one like kill rate. Like for every seven Russians that die, they kill one Ukrainian. So it's, it's absurd how, it, like how many dead Russians there are. Well, Tucker Carlson – the the Russians took this information and flipped it. They flipped the casualty rate, and then they they put it out there and said, "Oh, this is the real thing. This is the real misinf. This is the real uh, documents. These are the real documents." And then everyone's like, "No, no, no. Those are fake documents. Those those figures are totally reversed." But do you think Tucker Carlson cares? No, he's on Team Putin. So he took the misinformation and put it. On his uh, on his broadcast, he took the disinformation from Russia and spread it on his his Fox News station. Who does the Republicans trust the most? F Tucker Carlson, Fox News. When when you do that, you lead to people who who do stupid shit like like that shooter. Where where that guy go? When when you have shit like that, then you have this then you have this dumbass listening to, to TV all day, only getting information from Fox News, and then doing stupid shit like killing people. Be 
it goes so you can literally see a line from Russia from Vladimir Putin to this guy shooting a kid in in his neighborhood. You can I can draw a line. Do you see it? Do you see it? Like am I I'm not the only one, right? I you can see it too. I'm not crazy. You can see it too, right? Like holy shit. Okay. Tucker Carlson used the edited version distributed by her Telegram channel to claim that Ukraine was suffering a 7 to 1 troop loss ratio and losing the war, when actually it's reversed. But Tucker Carlson went with this one because it made Russia look good and, and it made Ukraine look bad. Why? Why would Tucker Carlson do that? Why would he do that? Why would Tucker Carlson help Russia like that? Remember, remember, rem I remember. This all go back. This all goes back to 2016. Remember, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin made a deal. They made a deal. Vladimir Putin said, "You get rid of to Donald Trump. You get rid of NATO. You get rid of the sanctions. You let me have Ukraine, and I'll make you president." And Donald Trump said, "Okay." And that's what happened. <laughs> Well, Donald Trump tried to give Ukraine to to um, to um, tried to give Ukraine to Russia, but a bunch of people tried. A bunch of people stopped him. Uh, that like the the ambassador and like a whole bunch of people. I don't have their names, but a whole bunch of people stopped them and then called and said, "Hey, dude, look at look what you're doing. You're stopping Ukraine from defending themselves after they already made an agreement to do it." Remember, and they impeached him for it. Remember the phone call with Zelensky. Anyways, so. This all connected. Holy shit. I can't like it's such a long line. It strikes me there is a detail in your book where the law ends inside the Mueller investigation that has received too little attention against the backdrop of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. And that is that Paul Manafort, who you were responsible for prosecuting, met with a top Putin ally, Konstantin Klimnik, and agreed to a deal that would essentially have enabled Putin to take control of the eastern part of Ukraine with Trump's approval. And Manafort had implicitly agreed to this. Why has this not gotten more attention against the backdrop of the invasion of Ukraine by Vladimir Putin? So I don't know why it has not gotten more attention, but I had the exact same reaction when the war occurred and I, you saw what Russia was trying to do I was like, yes, of course. Um, we had, in writing, uh, we had sort of captured some emails between Konstantin Kalimnik uh, and Paul Manafort um, talking about this deal and saying what they needed to make this work was a wink from Donald Trump. They needed a wink from Donald Trump for this deal to work. They needed a wink from Donald Trump for this deal to work. Where, where are we at? We're at 115. They needed a, a wink from Donald Trump to make this work. <laughs> what do you mean a wink from Donald Trump? What do you mean a wink? The C-SPAN networks bring you uh, long-form public affairs programming. From what do you mean a Canada wink from Donald Trump? To, like a signal? Some kind of signal from Donald Trump? Is that what you need? Do you need a signal from Donald Trump? What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. And if it is Russia, which is probably not, nobody knows who it is. But if it is Russia, it's really bad for a different reason. Because it shows how little respect they have for our country when they would hack into a major party and get everything. But it would be interesting to see. So he just talked shit about the United States big time. <laughs> he praised Vladimir Putin, saying how big and strong and tough Vladimir Putin is, and that he and Vladimir Putin are in, on good terms. Vladimir Putin respects him. That they have they have an agree they have an understanding between them. They have a relationship. They have a relationship is what he's saying. And then get ready. Remember what what is what is. You know, they have this agreement to, to hand – so Konstantin Klimnik, the representative of Vladimir Putin, and Paul Manafort, the representative of Donald Trump, made an agreement 
Donald Trump would give the eastern half of Ukraine to Putin and exchange, Putin would help Donald Trump become president. They made this agreement. All they need is a signal from Donald Trump that, he's, that he agrees, that, that he agrees to this plan. So Donald Trump just spent the first half of this part praising Vladimir Putin and saying that they have a relationship. Now get ready. I'm talking shit about the United States. Now get ready. I, I will tell you this. Russia, if you're listening. Look at how he's looking directly into the camera. Look how he's looking directly into the camera. This whole time, he never looks at the camera. He doesn't even acknowledge the camera. Only until this point does he acknowledge the camera. And when he says these words, Russia, if you're listening, and he looks directly at the camera. I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. <laughs> I probably think you will be rewarded mightily. And then he looks away from the camera by our press. Oh my God! Ah! Ah! Okay, go back. He never looked at the camera until he's talking to Russia. Let's, let's go back. The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs yeah, yeah, programming yeah, 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 yeah. from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television okay. provider. Okay, okay, C-SPAN, okay. created by cable. Thank you, yes. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him. So he's denying that he has a relationship with Putin. <laughs> ah! he, he, he's not looking at the camera. Denying that he has a relationship with Putin. Without him other than he will respect me. He other than he will respect me. The only... So everything is of exculpable. Everything like makes him innocent. Oh, there's nothing, nothing, nothing except that he will respect me, which is good for him. So the only relationship Donald Trump has with, with Vladimir Putin is that... Vladimir Putin will respect him. Well, that's a bullshit. That's bullshit. We know there's already an agreement, right? There's already an agreement. So he hasn't looked at the camera. He doesn't respect our president. Hasn't looked at the camera. And if it is Russia, which is... He, he glanced briefly just to see where the camera was. Probably. But because he's getting ready, right? Because he said, because it wasn't Russia. He's, right before he said Russia, he looked at the camera to see if they're looking at him. Ah, oh, watch. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Without him other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. And if it is Russia... Did you see? He looked very... Right before he says, if it is Russia, he looks briefly at the camera. Go, go back. Watch. He never looks at, at the, um, the camera until he's, he addresses Russia. Get involved with Putin for I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. And if it is oh, Russia... No, oh, no, oh, there was for a brief second. 57? Can I, can I go back? Oh, no. It went all the way back. That's the, that, that was the wrong one. The C-SPAN networks bring you oh, long-form... Spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect... Okay, okay. Uh, is it alt? Can I alt? Plus? No, no. I just want to go advance frame by frame. No, that's a 10, dude. I don't even want to go like a few. It's like super jumping. Watch his eyeballs. Now I can't find my cursor. There it is. Watch his eyeballs. Do -do -do. Oh, here. Playback speed. That's what I want. Playback speed. Slower. Respect me. He doesn't watch, respect watch his our eyes. president. He looks. He looks. And if oh, it is Russia, looks. which is probably not, at the, the 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 slightest moment, the slightest moment, you can see his eyes look at the camera right before he addresses addresses it. And if it is Russia, which is probably not, oh, nobody oh, no, knows. No, no. Other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. Look. 
And if it is <laughs> Russia, which is probably not, nobody knows who it is. But if it See, is, we all know who it is. We all know who it is. But he's, but he's, he's talking bullshit. Is Russia? It's really bad for a different reason, because it's. Ah, I, I can't stand drunk Trump. Go faster. I can't stand Trump, dude. I I didn't realize how much I I I don't like him. Uh, I I can't stand him. Playback. Speed increase. Normal speed. Shows how little respect they have for our country when they would hack into a major party. So remember, he's basically stating what Russia's already done. He's saying how weak the United States is to let that happen. He's saying how strong and respected Putin is and how Putin respects him, but there's no relationship between them other than that respect. And that how he, how how the, the president isn't respected by um Obama isn't respected by by Vladimir Putin. That's that's what he so he just trashed the United States and praised Putin all over the place. And remember, all they need is a wink from Donald Trump to say that he's okay with the deal and get everything. But it would be interesting to see. I I will tell you that. now. Watch now. What yeah, here here comes. Watch when he now only when he addresses Russia does he look at the camera. Watch this Russia. If you're listening. I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Ah, by our press. Ah. <laughs> and, and he does the arm gesture, like the, the really wooden arm gesture, like a super wooden arm gesture. Like it's, it's, it's obvious that... that that whole line was his wink to Russia, and he wanted to make it sure that they saw it. That's why it's so fucking obvious. He looks directly at the camera, and then he says, "Like you will be rewarded mightily." And then does the to, to he knows that 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 it sounds bad, so he does the by our press. He planned it ahead of time because he thinks he's clever. <laughs> but, it's, but it's so, it's so wooden. It's so wooden. It's, it's so like uncharacteristic. It's so bad. <laughs> it's, it's like if, you, if, if you're writing a letter to someone and you want to put in a secret message and then like, but you want to embed it into the message. You're like, oh, I'm smart. The way I'm going to embed it is I'm going to write the whole message in, in lowercase, but the, in, but the secret message, I'll put in capitals. Oh, I'm so smart. So it's like, yeah, let's go to the store and kill some time <laughs> before granny comes back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's obvious what the real message is. And so it's, he's doing the same thing. It's obvious that he's talking directly to Russia. That's the wink that they needed in order to, to enact the plan. So let's go back to this guy here. It's we sort of captured some emails between constant. I was like, yes, of course. Um, we had in writing. Uh, we had sort of captured some emails between Konstantin Kalimnik uh, and Paul Manafort um, talking about this deal. So we already have proof. We have proof of this deal because we have emails between these two guys talking about it, that, about their, their, their deal. We have proof. It's already established. It's proof. Dude, it's there. <laughs> Russia and Trump had a deal. I mean, don't you – like, it's – <laughs> and saying what they needed to make this work was a wink from Donald Trump. I just played that wink for you over and over and over again, and I showed you how obvious it was, how he never looked at the camera until he was talking to Russia. Then he addressed the can. then he looked at the camera. And the first time, it was so brief that it was only like a frame. Like, I, I have to figure out how to go through it real, real slow. But right before he says Russia, he looked at the camera. And then again, he when he addresses Russia, he looks at the camera. And when he stops addressing Russia, he, he, he looks at everyone else. He says, <laughs> you will you will be rewarded mightily by our press. 
you see like it's so obvious where he cuts off the message to and from like uh, like the beginning of of his transmission to Russia and where his transmission to Russia ends it's obvious it's obvious it's obvious guys it was obvious wink it was an obvious wink everyone could see it it was an obvious wink and that's what that was the signal in order to make everything happen and we're, it's not me like being conspiracy theory we fucking have proof dude we wrote they wrote a whole report about it the mother report <laughs> like they have proof of course they decided to do this <laughs> they have not only the mother report but there's the senate select intelligence committee report as well that backs up the mother report republicans signed off on that like this is a real thing dude Dude, I'm not making this up. They had a deal. Russia and Donald Trump had a deal. You, you, over, you help us take over. Russia said you help us take over over Eastern Ukraine, and we will help you become president of the United States. And once you're president of the United States, you need to do other things for us, like take off sanctions and 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 uh, I forget what else. But yeah, <laughs> it was obvious uh, that this would happen. But take Trump out of this. This was clearly indicating what it is that um, Mr. Putin was trying to do, which is to take half of Ukraine and actually the wealthy part of Ukraine. And now you see it's basically I want to take all of it. Um, and um, it did get some attention in The New York Times. It certainly got attention in the Senate report. Um, but it was a, such a clear indication of what Vladimir Putin was trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> Vladimir Putin wants, wanted to take over the eastern part of Ukraine, and Donald Trump was going to be the guy that okayed it and, and made it a certainty. But then Donald Trump lost power. He couldn't fulfill his function anymore. And so Vladimir Putin had to go all in with a military invasion, and that was disaster, because his own, his own generals had been lying to him about how strong his troops were and how weak the the ukrainians were his own and why did they lie to him because their troops their their subordinates lied to the generals and why because they were all afraid if that if if you didn't do it right you're going to get killed or lose your job so it was, it's all corrupt they have no integrity <laughs> right democracy is fucking way better than than fear and coercion democracy is way better when people believe with their hearts in the system in in what they have and and, and what they they will they will for free they will for free defend it but when when it's built on corruption and lies and not the truth and not good then 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 it will collapse because it's no strength to it there's no integrity to it the the slightest bit of pressure makes it crumble so that's that's the example of what Russia is. Ru Vladimir Putin isn't dumb, but he believed his own bullshit. He believed that the Russian troops, the army was stronger and more proficient than it really was. He believed the Ukrainians were weaker and and more demoralized than they really were. <laughs> And it's because everyone lies to everyone else. A while ago, the the Russian army had been hollowed out. Um, after after the uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union, um, they had a, a real good guy, a real good general who reconstituted the the uh, the Russian army to be fearsome. But the guy was not popular because he was effective. And so he was not popular with, with grifters who just wanted to make money. They didn't fucking care about how good the army was. They just needed to make money, and this guy was causing problems. So they got rid of him because he was causing problems and not making money. <laughs> so they got rid of him and put their own guy in who let them, like, hollow out the Russian military. And every time there was a check, the guy would just say, oh, yeah, it's all good, boss, no problem. <laughs> and so the boss would report, it's all good, boss, no problem, all the way up. Right? Numbers look good, even though it was hollowed out on paper, it looked good. So you could lie plausibly to your boss. And that was the whole way down. That was the whole way down. So the slightest bit of pressure, the slightest bit of pressure caused the whole thing to collapse. It's not like the, in a democracy where the power is invested in the people. So the people themselves have an incentive to secure their, you know, keep strong their own, their own system because they're invested in it. They're the ones with the power. Like it's not some, it's not some fucking criminal billionaire who with, with a pre, with a prevalence uh, or with a preference for violence who controls power. No, it's the people. It's the people. That's why that's why the the people of democracies defend it because they're invested in it. Oh.
Okay. Man, I went all over the place. I'm all over the place. What time is it? It's 10. So it's almost two hours. I'm going to do a few more things and then take a little break because I'm tired. <laughs> hmm. I don't want to get into Tennessee right now. So here's Mike Pompeo. Remember that guy who refused to say that, that the Trump administration would transfer power after they had already lost the election? <laughs> he refused to say it and said they're going to actually have a Trump administration. That guy was part of the crew that surrendered to the Taliban. <laughs> Does it have a date? September 12th. So it was September 12th over there, but in the United States, it was September 11th. So I want you to get a nice clear picture of what Donald Trump's administration is doing. In America, on September 11th, 2020, the 19th anniversary of September 11th, Mike Pompeo went to the Taliban and and surrendered unconditionally he agreed to leave everything and he like he he he's unconditional surrender he want he said we're going to be out of here by this date promise and that date happened to be like a few months after the new president got in into office did donald trump f follow through with what he said hell no hell no he fucked he fucked over the military donald trump fucked over the military big time Big time, dude. He 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 surrendered unconditionally to the Taliban and then didn't do anything about withdrawing our troops. And he set the date for withdrawal a few months after the new administration took place, which really wasn't supposed to happen. Remember, they already had a plan. They already they already had a plan to overthrow the government at this point. So to them, it was no big deal. It was no big deal. They were either not going to follow through with their with their intention of, of leaving Afghanistan, which I think what, what, what it was. I think their deal was that – I think their idea was that, that they were never going to leave Afghanistan. Donald Trump was going to hold on to power, and then since he never started to withdraw from Afghanistan, it was never going to begin. He was just going to keep them there. <laughs> ah, keep our troops there for no fucking reason to drain money to weaken the United States. So it was because of this motherfucker that that Joe Biden got dumped with like right after right after he tried to overthrow the government like two months later. He was like, oh, yeah, by the way, we have to like do our entire withdrawal from Afghanistan and nothing has been done about it. Did you forget? And Joe Biden was like, what? What? <laughs> These guys just tried to overthrow my government. What are you talking? Oh, holy shit. All right. All right. Wait a minute. Give me. Fucking six more months. Come on. <laughs> and they're like, all right, clock's ticking, motherfucker. <laughs> so so while Joe Biden's trying to put out all these other fight, fighters, he's like, oh, yeah, I got to do this withdrawal. So it was, an, um, it was amazing that, that the military was able to, to airlift so many people out. Like a fucking city in a week. They airlifted by, by plane. They airlifted a city in a week. Holy shit, dude. That's like like a quarter million people in a week. That's more people than the entire city of Salem. In a week. They moved in an entire in a week. That's an I, I can't even conceive of the logistics that that required. That's like planes landing and taking off nonstop and getting filled nonstop. Non I mean, where are they going, right? <laughs> they all can't go to one airport. <laughs> that that's like logistical hell. I don't know how they did that. Quarter million people in a week. But this motherfucker is the guy who set it up to be a disaster that it was. That was like the the fact that it was saved as much as it was was a credit to the U.S. Army and well, the U.S. military. But but these guys set us up for failure. These guys, the Trump administration, Mike Pompeo, set us up for failure because in his mind, we were never going to leave Afghanistan. Trump was never going to leave office. They were never going to honor this agreement. <laughs> Do you see how close we were to, to like losing everything? I, I I want you to understand like if I'm a little bit like emotional, if I, if this seems excessive, it's because we came like that close. 
They had it already set up. All right, I'll take my break now. <laughs> like a five-minute break. Inter Do I have any like royalty-free music I can play? Um, yeah, I have like cheese, cheese. Do I still? Where is that? Uh oh, maybe I. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I don't know what songs these are. I'm just going to like play them, but I'll be back in like five minutes.
All right, all right, all right. We're back, we're back, we're back. Job on back. Hello, yes, I'm back. It is uh, indeed me. Stop. Oh, okay. You know, I might have to cut all that out if, any, if, if it was like all copyright or something. I don't even know. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. I mean, look how beautiful this is. I mean, look what a great sheeter. What a, and like, it's going to only get better. I hear tomorrow, like literally tomorrow, <laughs> they're going to um, update the the, the, uh, the underlying shader pack. So rethinking voxels is built atop another, another thing <laughs> called um, complementary reimagined shaders. So complementary shaders. There's so complementary so rethinking voxels is built upon complementary shaders, which is built upon iris and which is built upon sodium, which is another mod, which is built upon fabric, which is um, built upon uh, uh, Minecraft. <laughs> like, Talk about dependencies. Ah! <laughs> How many things do you have to install first? Ah! <laughs> okay. What else do I got here? What else do I got? Oh, yeah, back, back to my folders. Back to the mission. Oh, man, my folders are got all mixed up. All mixed up. Okay, are we out? Yeah, we're going. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. So, I've gone over the Proud Boy conspiracy trial. I've refreshed your memory as to, like, the depths of, of this conspiracy, the spider web. And I've shown you how it's a, it's a big line. Vladimir Putin has been trying to take over Ukraine for a real long time for a real long time uh and he, he installed uh victor yanukovych to, to help him take it over the guy how he got into power was th through a guy named paul manafort so paul manafort learned how to do the trick of of uh tricking people and overthrowing democracy he did it <laughs> with with um with victor yanukovych uh, in Ukraine first. After he did it there, he then flew to the United States and became Trump's campaign manager to do the same thing. To do the same thing. He's the campaign manager for candidate Donald Trump. That, and then he and Konstantin Klimnik, the, the, the representative of Vladimir Putin, of the Russian government, made an agreement. We have emails about this agreement, so it's a real thing. They have an agree they made an agreement. Donald Trump, once he becomes president, will give Eastern Ukraine to to Vladimir Putin. And in turn, Vladimir Putin will give you the presidency. Will help you become president of the United States. And all they needed so they said Putin agrees to this, but we need a sign from Donald Trump that says he agrees to it as well. You can't like write a piece of paper, and you can't just come out and say, "Hey, Vladimir Putin, I agree with with our conspiracy." Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You can't do that, right? So he's got to have a sign, a way of letting them know that he's on board, and that that was the whole thing. When he when he when he said, "Russia, if you're listening," and look directly at the camera. The only time he looked directly at the camera was when he used the word Russia, when he was talking to Russia. And when he was done talking to Russia, he stopped looking at the camera and averted his gaze to the press. And he used his arm to highlight the fact that he, he stopped and was and averted his gaze to the press. So the gaze is, is your indication of when he's talking to you, to Russia. So Donald Trump gave the nudge, nudge, wink, wink to Russia saying, yes, I'm on board. You help me become president and I will give you eastern Ukraine. That's treason, treason, because it had nothing to do with what the American people wanted. The whole point of having an election is to decide who the people want. You invest the power into the people and you let them decide where we're going. And Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin want to take that away. They say, no, I don't care what the people want. It's what we want, the elite. 
That's what Donald Trump is. He's an elite. He's a billionaire. And he cavorts with other criminal elites like Vladimir Putin. So... <laughs> So because of that, right, because of all this, Donald Trump became president and enacted a whole bunch of terrible policies while he was president. Uh, it was awful. It was awful what he did to the United States. Uh, we, he gave away our secrets. He befriended dictatorships and he, he shunned our friends. Uh, he weakened us. He, like, betrayed the Kurds. <laughs> he, like, like, it was awful. It was awful what he did. Um it was absolutely awful, and and he fucked over the, the the post office. The post office was supposed to convert its entire fleet to electric cars. We were gonna have an entire electric uh, post office, but that was thwarted by Donald Trump. Donald Trump installed this this uh, uh, billionaire by the name of like Louis DeJoy, who owns. Uh, has stock, a bunch of stock in in FedEx and UPS. He owns a bunch of stock in FedEx and UPS. And he's like, hey, guy with a bunch of stock in the competitor to the United States Post Office, say, hey, competitor, why don't you run the post office? So the guy's like, oh, okay, Lewis DeJoy. He's like, oh, sure, I'll run the post office. So he, he takes power, and he immediately fucks over the post office with all sorts of stuff. Remember how – so so this this is part of, of, of the conspiracy. So Donald Trump's in power, I was telling you, and he wanted to maintain power after he loses the 2020 election. One way he was going to do that was that, remember, the Democrats, all the Democrats were – a lot of Democrats were voting by mail – because it's the smart way to do it. Voting by mail is fantastic. I love vote by mail. Oregon does it like fantastic with three weeks to vote. I vote in my pajamas, literally. It's fantastic. I love vote by mail. But Donald Trump hates it because, and Republicans hate it. Why do they hate vote by mail? Because it thwarts a lot of the old school Southern uh, Republican or Southern uh, racist uh, voter suppression methods. Uh, a lot of ways that the that that the well Republicans racists <laughs> would <coughs> suppress the vote of people they didn't like voting was intimidation. Uh, they'd have literacy tests. They'd have a poll tax. They'd have like they'd like make registration really really hard. They'd have only a few polling places, so the line was really 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 long. So you have to wait a super long time to do it. They would restrict the voting day to only one day. There was all sorts of things they do to get people to not vote. <laughs> all sorts of things they did. So voting by mail gets past all of that. Now, you have three weeks to vote. No one can intimidate you because you get the ballot in your home. <laughs> no, no one can... Um, no one can... Yeah. No one can like suppress your vote if... Uh, if, or it doesn't matter how many polling stations you have if you vote by mail. They can't make long lines, and they can't intimidate you at the lines. Like if if you're automatically registered to vote, then like you just get a ballot in the mail. No, no, nobody can stop you from voting. It's fantastic. I love vote by mail. So in, it encourages voter participation, which is why I love it, and which is why Republicans hate it. So in 2020, like Donald Trump knew that the coming election in 2020 was going to be heavily skewed toward vote by mail because it's because of covid so he wanted to make sure that all those people who voted by mail didn't get their votes counted and he wanted to encourage his own people to vote in person so that's what you know because that's where they control it more when you vote in person then republicans can really really control things they can send poll watchers to harass you they can just have guys big guys standing there watching you they can they can like challenge your vote they can challenge your signature they have voter id that they, they have they can stop you from voting they can limit the voting polling places so it's a super long line out in the weather in the hot sun like they can do all sorts of terrible things to stop you from voting all, all sorts of things but when you vote by mail they can't do it so they wanted to stop it. <laughs> but it, but all those bad things, if you're on their team, they'll let they'll suddenly in the white areas, you have lots of polling places and very, very short lines, and no one bothers you when you try to vote. It's like really, really nice experience if you're in the white con Republican controlled area and you're a white person voting for their team. You see how that works? So <clears throat> vote by mail is fantastic. So 
so during 2020, during COVID, a bunch of Democrats voted by mail and a bunch of Republicans voted in person. Well, in order to thwart people voting by mail, remember Donald Trump implanted his guy, Louis DeJoy, to be postmaster general. That guy, Louis DeJoy, owns a bunch of stock in the competitor to the post office. So he has an incentive to sabotage it. So while he was there, what he did was he... On purpose, he got rid of, of post office bo drop boxes so you couldn't mail your ballot, and he got rid of, of mail old mail machines that were old, but they worked really good. The problem is they're so old that you can't really replace them. So he got rid of them. He got rid of irreplaceable machines that, that really, really did a good job. He got rid of them, so that caused all the mail to go really slow. So Louis DeJoy literally sabotaged the United States Post Office system in order to help Donald Trump secure the election in 2020. It's all fucking connected. And he's the guy that blocked the, uh, the transformation of the U.S. postal fleet from gas to electric. We would have been electric by now. But Louis DeJoy fucked it up and saying, no, we're going to get more gas things. And he put in an order to, to get a whole bunch of more gas, gas uh, um, trucks. Well, gas trucks are obsolete, dude. We're trying to get off of gas. We're trying to move to electric and stuff, and you're just fucking it up. And, and it would have been amazing if the U.S. government's like, yo, we're going to like transition to, to electric because it, once, once the U.S. government is a huge customer, and once it does it, then there'll be government, then businesses will have the infrastructure already in place to manufacture more of them for the for the rest of the us, the consumers. But no, Lewis and Joy fucked that all over. That's Donald Trump. Man, so many ways Donald Trump fucked us over by by stealing our vote he literally stole our vote he made a fucking deal with 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 vladimir putin to literally steal our vote and and become president god damn him he fucked us over so many ways so <laughs> wait where'd that what okay <laughs> so we so so He's in office. He does a bunch of bad shit. He sets he sets the, the he's basically setting the infrastructure up in order to overthrow the government in 2020. He he sabotaged the post office. He had Mike Pompeo like on board with with overthrowing stuff. He installed key people in key positions to overthrow the government. He and uh he had it all planned out. It was a big fat coup planned in, long in advance. And uh, the Proud Boys are just part of it, just like the uh, the Oath Keepers. But they're all traitors. They're all traitors. They're all trying to overthrow democracy and install rule by elites. Their elites. Them. Uh, the Confederacy. Okay. And remember, Republicans are only getting their information from Fox News. So they get, they're getting brainwashed into this thing. <laughs> They're getting brainwashed into believing all this propaganda. They don't know any of what I just told you. That whole long story about how Donald Trump is connected, how I've shown this whole thing the entire way through, they don't believe or know any of it. They don't know any of it. They, they can't understand it. It is, it is foreign to them. They have no context. They, they have, they, yeah, they have no context. They might come to me and be like, Hunter Biden, babble, babble, babble. I would have no idea what they're talking about because I have no context. I'm not in their information bubble. In their information bubble, it all makes sense because there's a context to it. Once they leave the information bubble, nothing makes sense to them. It's literally like being in a foreign country. Nothing makes sense. That reinforces their desire to stay within their information bubble where it's safe and secure. And everything makes sense because it's all contextualized. If, they, if I try to tell you this story that I, that's all backed up by facts, I'm not making this shit up. There's a, the Mueller report and then there's the Senate Select Intelligence Committee report. Two reports, guys, that outline this whole thing. I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. It's there. But to a Republican, it, it makes no sense to them. They don't have the context. They don't know who Konstantin Klimnik is. They don't really know who Paul Manafort is. They don't really know, like... The mother, they, they think the mother report, they, dis, they don't believe the mother report. They, along with Vladimir Putin, don't believe the mother report. So, they, so Republicans and Putin agree that the mother report is no, not valid to them. So you can't, really, you can't rely on U.S. sources because Republicans don't believe U.S. sources. <laughs> Republicans and Russians don't believe U.S. sources. Um, 
Therefore, they don't have any context. They don't really understand anything that I'm saying. There's no way they could. But but you understand why. And you, it's not a it's not a benign thing. It's malignant. It's malignant. That misinformation is malignant. They tried to overthrow our government, number one, and it causes people to fucking kill one another. Like, it's malignant. It's malignant. It's literally cancer. So part of the malignancy is is guns, right? <laughs> like guns lead to like gun deaths. In fact, the number one killer of children in America today is are guns. Number one, guns. That's the number one. Um, you can't tell a gun gun nut this because they won't believe you. Or if they do believe, it depends, right? Some gun nuts are cool. There are cool gun nuts. I don't, I, I'm not going to get you wrong. There are some cool gun nuts. Who are the cool gun nuts? The cool gun nuts are the w gun nuts that are like, yep, I love guns. I love guns. I love everything about guns. I'm a gun nut. But I recognize that we need to change things. Things need Something needs to be done. And those, those I, even though I'm a gun nut, I, I would abide by a universal set of laws that cover the whole country. I have no problem with that. A lot of gun nuts are like that. There's a lot of gun nuts who are on board with okay. If you do it right, okay across the board, across the whole country. Because it needs to be the whole country. You can't do it piecemeal. You can't do it. You can't do it. If you have a hole, it's like trying to, it's like trying to make a bucket with a hole in it and saying, all right, here you go. It's not going to fucking work, dudes. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think? Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's got to be over the whole country. You can't just do piecemeal state by state. So make it universal. They would be on board. With, gun nuts would be on board with it. It's just a certain subset, a certain subset of gun nuts that are not on board. <laughs> and <clears throat> There's a tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of gun nut who is not on board because they're afraid that the restrictions would fall on only the minorities and not the white supremacists. But that's only a tiny, 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 tiny sliver. The other vast majority of gun nut who is not on board with, with uh, universal regulation is a white supremacist. <laughs> it's because it impedes their idea of white supremacy. They need guns in order to do white supremacy. It's historic. It's always been that way. Forever in the United States, it's white supremacy is only expanded under threat of the, of the firearm. The only way when the when the when the the first people the first uh, Europeans landed in America, if they they like died over and over and over again. They sent waves of people who just died over and over and over again, and uh, until like one stuck there. <laughs> But that's only because the natives were, like, cool with them. It's not because they, they like, literally overpowered them. It was because the natives were cool with them. Number, and number two, the natives are all fucking dying from disease that the, the settlers brought there. So, so to the natives, their, their whole, like, society was crumbling because everyone was dying from disease that they'd never seen before. That had been brought over by the... the um, Europeans. So there's everything about them was crumbling already. They're already weak, already weak uh, from the disease collapsing the the society. Like it's it's like having you know how many plagues Europe went through. How many like we think of like the Black Death, like but. They they had plague after plague after plague. It wasn't just one time. It was over and over and over again, where half your village would die, like over and over and over again. <laughs> Not just one time, over and over and over again. Um. So, yeah, if, <laughs> to to get to to where they were then, imagine like that. So that's basically backed up. <laughs> like this one didn't kill you all out. Well, how about this one? No. Well, how about this one? No. 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 Okay. So what you're left is a guy who's immune to all these things, or or not immune, but maybe not as badly affected by all these various diseases. So 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 he's like okay, and he's went through. But it to get to him, it took generations. 
how many people had how many generations did you have to go through in order to get to this one guy who was relatively okay carrying all these diseases <laughs> how many generations did you have to how many people had to die to get to that point okay take all that now drop it into a pristine pristine <laughs> environment these guys had no no connection at all to europe they had none of the diseases that means they had none of the all those generations that had to die to find the one that that wouldn't die they didn't have that <laughs> so for them it was just like Bleh! everybody dies not half your village everybody dies everybody dies oh it was so bad for them so, yeah, they're literally suffering the apocalypse. Then these settlers come who also just die, just fall over dying because they don't know how to live over, over in the United States, over in America. They don't know how to live. So they're dying. Everyone's dying. It's awful. And so, yeah, finally they, they get a foothold and they're, they're, they're there. Uh, but they can't really expand too far past the mountains because they had shitty ass muskets and that can't re that aren't really good at aiming unless you're they, you can't really aim with it you can point in the general direction and then hope it doesn't like <laughs> point in the general direction re literally because it's gonna like curve dude it's gonna spin out of control they didn't they had to invent better guns in other words to subjugate the united the america that had, they had to invent better guns added with the fact that the the natives were like decimated by disease brought by the europeans in order to take power. But it was with the guns that let, let it happen. The gun. The firearm. So if it wasn't for the firearm, they couldn't have they couldn't have done it. That's what I'm saying. The firearm is fundamental to white supremacy. The firearm is fundamental to white supremacy. If it's not for the... So I can see why white supremacists would have a visceral reaction to any restriction to the firearm because it's literally fundamental to who they are. The the violence implicit in the firearm is fundamental to who they are. If it's not for if they don't have a firearm, how can they be a white supremacist? They're equal to everyone else. Okay, so it's not just me, right? It's not just me talking this nonsense. Check this out. As Tennessee Republicans call Governor B. Lill's ERPO proposal dead on arrival, a new poll shows most Tennessees, Tennesseans support gun reforms. So think about it. Most people in Tennessee support a gun law, but the Tennessee Republicans refuse to, to pass it. Uh, the mayors, the mayors of of um of Tennessee, of the cities of Tennessee, of the mayors, all signed on to to a bunch of uh, ideas that the that that the Republicans could do to to help reduce gun violence in Tennessee. Remember what happened in Tennessee a couple weeks ago? A woman shot her way into a Tennessee school and murdered three kids and three adults. Before I think she killed herself. And which is awful, right? Awful. It happened like it's awful. Mass shootings are awful. Those kids, those people, those adults didn't deserve to die. Why is it that this one person has the ability to come in and just mass murder someone so easily? Why? How is it even possible? Why? It's because they have easy access to firearms. So they're like, yo, why don't we restrict ac easy access to firearms? Why don't we like the why don't we stop people from getting firearms so easily? Well, so there's like the mayors came out and said, yeah, dude, let's require background checks for all gun purchases. Let's implement extreme risk protection orders, which is like red flag laws, I guess, which means like if you have a history of domestic violence and you said, I'm going to kill you, you probably shouldn't be able to buy a gun. <laughs> right? Common sense. Enhance safety of the concealed carry laws. I don't know what that's about, but that, that's cool, right? Uh, establish a statewide minimum age for purchasing of firearms. Basic stuff. Uh, require and enable secure storage of guns. Limit gun thefts from cars. Ban high-capacity magazines. Protect women by prohibiting convicted stalkers from own, owning guns. 
Common sense stuff, dude. Provide funding for school threat assessment teams. Ah, uh, that doesn't really help. Require reporting of lost and stolen guns. Basic stuff, guys. Basic stuff, right? These are basic stuff. But but the the Republican House repo controlled by the or Republican government, state government in Tennessee refuses to do any of that. Refuses to do any of that. In fact, they did the opposite. They did the opposite. They passed a law to protect gun own, the gun manufacturers from being sued by, by people who get killed by guns. So remember when the, 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 the Tennessee Republicans say they represent the people? They're not talking about the people of Tennessee. They're talking about the white supremacists. When they say they fight for the republic, they're not talking about the American republic. They're not talking about the, tennis, the republic of Tennessee. They're talking about the white supremacy republic. They're talking about the, republic, the, the confederate republic. That's who they really are. That's who they pledge allegiance to. They don't give a they don't care about us. They don't care about us. They don't care about us. Look at it. We tell them what we need. A government, a, a democratic government is responsive to its people. And the you can tell that government in Tennessee is not democratic. How can I tell? Because it is not at all responsive to its people. Not at all. The people are saying one thing and the Republican the government does another thing. That's called tyranny. And that's what Republicans want, a, 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 a republic of confederates, which is tyranny. The confederacy is tyranny. It's slavery. Remember, they're about slavery, guys. They're slavers. They're dis their ancestors are slavers. They're all about slavery. They're literally slavers. And they're, they're slavers that want to re reincarnate a slavery republic. And they said so in their own words. I, I I don't want to play it again, but I played it last week. You can listen to last week's episode. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Tennessee moves to shield gun firms after school shooting in, uh, by Jonathan Mat Mat Matisse in, uh, from uh, Associated Press, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. In the wake of a deadly school shooting last month, Republican lawmakers in Tennessee awarded final passage Tuesday to a proposal that would further protect gun and ammunition dealers, manufacturers, and sellers from against lawsuits. The Senate's 19-9 to 9 vote sends the bill to Republican Governor Bill Lee, despite pushback from Democratic lawmakers saying their GOP counterparts are trying to shield gun com companies just weeks after Nashville school shooting that killed six people, including three nine-year-olds. The final vote came as Lee at Lee's administration was still trying to drum up enough support among lawmakers in his party to pass legislation to keep firearms away from people who could harm, who could harm themselves or others. The fate of that kind of measure, measure remains uncertain. We found out that they killed it, that Republicans killed it. So they killed Governor Lee's. This, they said it's dead on arrival, remember? They said, oh yeah, your bill to stop dangerous people from getting guns that's dead on arrival instead we're going to sign this bill we're going to pass this bill that shields gun manufacturers we're going to sign it we're going to send it to you you're going to veto it and then we're, it's going to come back to us and we're going to use our super majority to override your veto Lawmakers are hurrying to finish a legislative session as soon as this week while receiving national security over na national scrutiny over the expulsion of two young black lawmakers who are now reinstated over a House floor gun control protest. Students, parents, and others have also applied pressure for weeks to pass gun safety measures. So in other words, instead of paying attention to what the people of Tennessee want, the, 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 the white supremacists of, of the, the Tennessee legislature instead kicked out the two lawmakers who represented the people. That tells you that they represent a confederate uh, aristocracy republic or arist a confederate tyranny. They're, they're tyrants. They're literally tyrants. They don't care what the people want. They don't want, they don't care what your vote says. They want to overthrow your vote and put what they want in power. 
I can't. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, dudes. They like they had this big plan to overthrow the government. They did it like they live streamed it. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. Um. In fact, look at here. So Justin Pearson is one of the, the people who got kicked out or got voted out, expelled. And he's saying, watch today's House floor session. We must build our civic muscle in this fight for justice. Right now, we're fighting the passage of laws to ban books. Who ban, bans books? Republicans. Nazis. White supremacists. It's, it's so clear. It's so clear to me. I can't handle it. Despite accusations of sometimes extremely vulgar comments and other inappropriate advances, Republicans did not remove the 39-year-old East Tennessee lawmaker from his leadership position nor from his committee assignments. But taxpayers have paid for his actions. News Channel 5 learned that potentially thousands of dollars have been spent to protect one victim, relocating her from the downtown apartment building where she and Campbell both had apartments, shipping her furniture back home in another part of the state, and placing her in a downtown hotel for the remainder of her internship. In other words, Remember how the white supremacists in Tennessee kicked out Pearson and Jones for a breach of decorum? Of decorum. What was their breach of decorum? They moved from their desk to the well out of turn. That was what they kicked them out for. This other guy, Campbell, <laughs> harassed, sexually harassed interns to the point where the state had to pay for the intern to move away, to get away from him. But he didn't lose his job. He didn't lose his, his committee ships. Everyone swept it under the rug and pretended, pretended that it was okay. After the story came out, then they kicked him out. Oh, they didn't kick him out. They didn't kick him out. He resigned. He resigned after the story came out. But it was going to be okay. And they did not do it. They did not expel him. So in other words, in other words... For for the white supremacists in the in the uh, Confederate Republic in the Confederate Republic that these guys represent, it is okay to sexually harass your subordinates. It's okay. It's part of the perks of being one of the elites, right? They don't have human rights. They don't care about human rights. They don't care about individual liberties. They actually care about power. And since the lawmaker has more power than the intern, a lot of power, then if According to their logic, it was within the lawmaker's right to sexually harass this intern. And, oh, okay, so it caused – he went too far. It caused problems. She wasn't game. Fine. We'll use taxpayer money to, to cover it up and, and take care of it. Not to stop the behavior, but to cover it up. Because it's his right to do that, according to white supremacist logic. Do you see how we're incompatible? How woke – Ideas and white supremacist logic are incompatible. You see how that is? It's no wonder white supremacists are so afraid of woke people. It's no wonder that they wage war against wokeism. It's literally, they're, they're, the two ideologies are literally incompatible. Under wokeism, it is not right for, for a person with more power to exert their power to get sexual favors from a subordinate. You, it's not right. It's not right. You can't do it. If you do that, if that's, if that's that's what you, you – you're there to serve the people, the people you represent. If you're there and instead of serving the people you represent, you use your power to ex exact sexual favors from your subordinates, you're not there doing your job. You should get the fuck out according to our side, the woke side. According to the white supremacist side, if you're, if you're a person of, of great power and you use your power to exert – pressure on a subordinate to get sexual favors that is a-ok -okay and encouraged it's part of the perks of having power and in fact if it goes too far we'll use our power to cover it up and you can keep doing it with another person two are incompatible you can't you can't these two cannot live together you see what i mean they can't live together they can't they can't live together they can't do it i have no coffee anymore i'm way out i should make more yeah, I'm going to make more. Okay. So, 
I wanted to show, I, I say that not to show you the hypocrisy, which is obvious, obvious hypocrisy, but to highlight the fact that it's more than just obvious hypocrisy. It's more than them just being stupid. It's more than that. It's more than that. They are protecting something. They are protecting a system. They, 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 they are protecting a system. That system is your enemy, and and my enemy. And that, and they, they point to the system. They rely on the system. They worship the system. But they themselves can never see the system. Otherwise, it would destroy them. It would their mind would blow up. How could you be a white supremacist if you are aware of the fact that the system of white supremacy is what gives you your 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 um, your uh, quote quote superiority? The reason why you have more money, the reason why you have more houses, the reason why you have more history, the reason why you have all these things is not because you're inherently better. But because the system, the system literally creates these outcomes. It is, it is, <laughs> and it's not because of you. It's because of the system. If you, if 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 a, if a white supremacist have ever understood this, they they could not be a white supremacist. How how could they? How could they say, oh yeah, I'm proud of my race for no reason whatsoever <laughs> i'm proud of this i'm proud of of this of the social construct i happen to be born into <laughs> like it doesn't make sense it destroys them they, they can never accept it it's their it's the contradiction they can never accept and since they can never accept it they have to do absurd things to, to bend around it just like the proud boys on trial you see remember how the proud boys because they can never admit that that they what they did was bad they have to, on trial, say absurd, stupid things. Take stupid positions. We just watched it happen. They had, we watched them take stupid positions, because they can, because of their internal contradiction. They can never, ever, ever admit it. The same thing with white supremacists. They can never, ever, ever, ever admit that uh, the system is what gives them their, their, their quote, quote superiority. Because if you took that away, <laughs> if you took away their system, that makes them equal to everyone else, and then, they're, then they're destroyed. <laughs> They have no basis for their claim. They can't say that I'm better because they're literally not. <laughs> they're literally not better. <laughs> they're like everyone else. Every <laughs> There's greatness everywhere. There's greatness everywhere, and there's shit everywhere. It's not just in white people. It's that that's a uh, that's an illusion. And it's not just men. It's just that's that's an illusion. There's greatness everywhere. Oh, here we go, here we go, here. It's a question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Clerk, can you read for the speaker residency requirements in order to represent a district? Wait, 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 wait. It's a question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Clerk, can you read for the speaker residency requirements in order to represent a district? Do you know why? Do you, do you remember last week when I told you that the speaker of the house represents a district far away but lives in Nashville <laughs> and owns a home in Nashville? And his kids go to school in Nashville. He doesn't pay taxes on his home there. And he doesn't pay taxes on his condo back in, on the, in the district he represents. <laughs> but he lives in Nashville. And while claiming, he represents like Colville. And he's the Speaker of the House. And he kicked out this guy because this guy walked from his desk to the front of the of the of the chamber that's why he got kicked out however they didn't kick out the guy who sexually harassed um a uh, uh an intern because that's one of the perks for them and this guy speaker of the house even though he doesn't represent his uh, even though he doesn't live in his district and he still collects money as if he did he did live in his district so he's making bank defrauding the people of Tennessee while still serving as as the as speaker of the house of Tennessee how is this even possible 
because remember they don't belong they don't they feel they don't live in the united states they live in the confederate republic and in the confederate republic it's one of the perks of power to not actually live where you quote quote represent you're not there to represent right he's not there as a representative he's there as an elite he's an elite there's a there's a dance that he has to do to maintain his position because yeah there's a big dance to them elections are not ways to listen to what the people want to to change power to do an exchange of power no 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 you never change power the point of elections is is a dance you have to do a specific dance for the court and if you do the dance for the court success well then you can you maintain your position your your position of on the court to serve the elite because that's who you really serve the elite not the people when under the under the republic confederacy or under the confederate republic right the, the confederate republics have a different set of rules they're a thing they're a thing you can study and look at i'm not like this they literally are like this thing inside of us i'm not like it's like a subgroup it's like you can look at it i'm i'm a sociologist right i uh, i studied sociology it's been a while but i mean like i'm I, i'm looking at it, i'm like damn dude that's a fucking thing that's a thing that's it's there it's a it's there's the confederate republic they believe in it and they they have networks they have it's not just me saying it's a thing. They have literal networks of relationships that you can map out and show how it's literally um, its own society, its own thing. Because remember, with in the Tennessee legislature, it's okay to have a, a sexual harasser. It's part of the perks. It's okay to have a guy not actually represent his district because he's – because it. The people of this district are not what's actually being represented. What's actually being represented is the ideas of the elite, which he does represent, which is why he's there and no one makes a fuss about it In, in because it's the Confederate Republic. Representative Jones there, he represents democracy. Like it's So, so in other words, to them, all this stuff is just a, a, a facade, a, a play. But, but Representative Joe's is, is actually coming out and saying, no, I'm actually putting faith in this institution. I'm actually saying it's actual real thing. And because it's a real thing, I'm holding you accountable to the things that, that went on. And how, if you're going to kick me out for this tiny infraction, how is it that you can keep this 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 uh, sexual molester over there guy and keep the Speaker of the House who doesn't even fucking live here? How can you even do that? And then, so here, listen, listen, that's the context. Listen to what, how it goes down. It's a question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Clerk, can you read for the Speaker residency requirements in order to represent a district? Can you read the residency requirements in order to represent a district? What do you need to do in order to represent a district? And one of those things is you need to live there. You need to live there. You can't just say I live there. You can't just own property that you, there. You can't just own a condo there. <laughs> you can't like that you visit on weekends. You have to actually live there in order to represent a district. So so um, Sexton, Speaker Sexton, he doesn't pay taxes. He owns a condo there that he visits on the weekend. Tennessee law says that the place you reside is where your family lives. And if you live with your family, that's where you reside. That's Tennessee law. Where your family lives is where you live. So if his wife and his kids all live in, in Nashville and his kids go to Nashville schools and he lives with his family, his, you know, his, mom, his wife and his kids in Nashville – that means he he's not a resident of the district he represents. How is it even possible that he can still be there? So they ask him, hey, can you read me? Since you're there, dude, since you're, you're illegally and wrongfully there, can you read for me the rules of what it takes to be a resident of the district you represent? He asked. He just asked. That's all he asked. That's all he asked, right? And it's part of the government to say, sure, I, I can do that for you, member, as a, out of respect. Because members respect one another, right? That's the whole deal of, of, of representation. They've re they're not in it personally. They're there to represent, one, represent their people. 
So respectfully, he just asked, what are the rules for, for, rep for representing for residency requirements? That's all I want to know. So let me, let me listen, let's listen one more time to, to, to Representative Jones asking very respectfully, very politely, very within his rights, uh, a question. It's a question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Clerk, can you read for the speaker residency requirements in order to represent a district? Yeah. Very, very simple, very simple, very easy. Very good, Representative Jones. That's a nice one. Congratulations to you. Representative Shaw, you're recognized. What? What? That wasn't that wasn't the, the, the question. That didn't answer the question, motherfucker. That didn't answer the question. The question was, yo, dude, what are the residency requirements for for the, the district that you represent? What are they? What are they? He, he's, and what did he say? Ah, good one. Thanks very much. And they ignored it and moved on. He fucking ignored him. Why? How can you even do that, dude? You're Speaker of the House and you just broke the, the rules. You just broke the rules. You ignored a, a, a representative asking a valid question. You just walked right over him. Pretended he wasn't there. Do you know why we have rules? Because when people do that, representatives, when people get dis, when representatives who are speaking in, on on behalf of the people they represent, you know, on agreed, you everybody already agreed to all these rules ahead of, ahead of time, and now you're using your power to just trample over my rule, my my power. At that point, representatives get crazy. <laughs> Like, for real, like, you just, like, ignored this person's valid, valid question in order to maintain your power. That guy shouldn't be there. That guy who kicked out Speaker Jones or, or Representative Jones for the slightest infraction, kicked him out for the slightest infraction, is a living, embodied, walking hypocrisy. Uh, oozing sack of pus. Look at the corruption on him, dude. He's a white supremacist. Where's the hood? He represents white supremacy. He doesn't care what the what the rules are. He doesn't care what the laws are of Tennessee. He represents the Confederate Republic, and in the Confederate Republic, that's just a perk of being a, a representative of the elite. I'm just telling you how it is, guys. I'm not making it up. You can see it for yourself. Maybe you weren't savvy to, to these things because the media doesn't doesn't tell you. Like how many like how many news stations are gonna um are gonna play this for you? Like how are you gonna find out about this? You're never gonna find out. Never. That's why I love the internet because it, you reach places. It's like a neural network. You reach places that the gatekeepers don't want you to get to. So I, I just want I just want you to see that there's literally a white supremacist reincarnation of the Confederate Republic, and you can see it in operation when you look at the Tennessee uh, House of Representatives. You can see it moving. You see how it works. It's like a worm. You can see it like, quivering. Oh, you can literally I I can see it. I can see it quivering. It's like a fucking maggot. It's gross. Oh, it's a white maggot. It's 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 I, I, oh my god, it's quivering. Oh, oh god, disgust. Out of absolute disgust. <laughs> look away, look away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Damn. Okay. So remember, remember how I was, I was telling you. So this this white supremacist Tennessee legislature, instead of dealing with their gun problem, passed a law to protect gun manufacturers. And. And I'm like, how can how can this how do they brainwash their people? Well, you know, we already have established through the same way that we established um, through the same way that we established that Trump and Vladimir Putin were in cahoots. We also know about uh, Russia's uh, troll army. They literally pay people to sit in cafes and run sock puppet accounts on Western media to to put. 
to broadcast Russian propaganda directly into the brains of Americans. They could never do that before. It's amazing. They they fuck. They love it. They love it. They can never do that before. Remember Yuri Be- Be- Bezmenov? Remember when he was talking? Like none of that shit really worked because the only thing they had were like. AM radio stations and like pamphlets that no one read anyways. Like it was really, 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 really hard to do it. With the internet, suddenly they had access to the brains of all these Americans. When like my my poor mom is on Facebook and she would get harassed by trolls every time she made a, a comment, any kind of neutral comment on a story she saw in the news. She would get harassed real, real bad to the point that she didn't know I like, was afraid to like use it anymore. It was real bad. I had to teach her a, a, a lot of stuff. <laughs> and like, or she'd get fed disinformation that she would totally believe. She would totally believe the disinformation. It would be obvious disinformation, but she'd point to it and say, this is why I believe this ridiculous thing that I'm repeating. And I'm like, mom, that's not real. That's not real. That's a fake thing. Or or she'd be like, I talk to all these people, I see all these comments, and they all say the same thing. I'm like, mom, they're all fucking trolls. They're not real. <laughs> like, oh my God. So, so... And we know it's a real thing. I'm not making it up. I'm not paranoid. There's government reports about it, and people have been convicted of it, and would be in prison if they came to the United States. Um, here's, oh, just recently. A federal grand jury charged four U.S. citizens and three Russian nationals with working with Kremlin intelligence services to conduct a multi-year political influence campaign. The superseding indictment alleges that Russian national Alexander Viktorovich Ionov Ionov, founder of the anti-globalization movement of Russia, used his organization under the direction of Russian Federal Security Services, FSB, and three Moscow-based intelligence officers to recruit, fund, and direct pro-Kremlin propaganda within the United States with the help of four Florida-based activists. (laughs) Who in the United States is pro-Russia and and anti-Ukraine? Who's pro-Russia, anti-Ukraine in the United States? Tucker Carlson. Okay. Ionov recruited four St. Petersburg members of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement. Uhuru. That's what uh, Proud Boys say all the time. Which may have been active in civil rights for decades in Florida and another political group in California to generate support for Russia's annexation of Ukraine and other Kremlin priorities. So yeah, dude, Russia is trying to infiltrate and 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 poison American minds all the time. They do it like this, like, but they also do it in uh, from from uh, from like from Europe and from Russia. They just send trolls over the internet to do it. Spoofing their their location. So, So, here's an example of how it happens, right? So, Washington voted to to ban guns in in their state, to ban some certain kind of guns in their state, which is great, right? But in the comment section in the uh, of this of this news story, there was like a brigade of pro-gun people. Are they? But are they really a brigade? Are they real? Are they real? Or are they like a troll army? Are they really a troll army? So let's check this out. Let's look, right? So remember how I told you that that the goal of Russia was to demoralize Americans. That was the whole thing, demoralization. They want to demoralize Americans to the point that they give up on the idea of truth, they give up on the idea of any kind of agency, of freedom, of action, and they believe that both sides are the same, that nothing can be done. They, they want you to give up. That's the whole point of demoralization, to give up. So we are faced... Uh, The United States is faced with this problem of mass shootings. It's the number one killer of our children. We must do something to address this problem. Do something. But if you're demoralized, you don't want to do anything. You want want to keep things the same. For someone who's demoralized, the blood of innocent children is an acceptable cost to touch guns. So demoralization. So here's an example. This Vicky Strickler person is is an example of, of like 
a person who's been demoralized and converted to broadcast Russian propaganda. So here's what she says. Even if they ban assault weapons today, there's so many already out there available to buy, steal, trade, barter, whatever, that it will never end. This argument is known as, it's too hard, we can't do it. The United States is too incompetent. Other countries have done it. Other states have done it. Other, other, in fact, every other state has done it. Only Americans are too stupid and weak and too incompetent to, to, do, to, to remove guns. Do you see how that's demoralizing? Her first thing is to call Americans stupid and incompetent. Demoralization. That's how it works. So her first thing is to call Americans dumb. The next one. If the U.S. bans them, you will still be able to get them from other countries. Mexico, for instance. So that's, that's an example of blaming someone else. Removing responsibility from white supremacy onto the brown people. <laughs> Blame the brown people every time. The truth is that Mexico has a gun problem because what happens? Mexico has lots of, of, of uh, drugs, but not a lot of guns. <laughs> the United States has lots of guns, but not a lot of drugs. <laughs> so, in other words, businessmen in the United States make a trade with businessmen in Mexico. U.S. people will give Mexico cartels guns and the cartels will give US businessmen drugs. That's how it works, guys. But this person is trying to flip the script and blame brown people. Demoralization. Remember, fascists don't believe in multiracial democracy. It's their enemy. They want to destroy multiracial democracy. So they want to increase racial animosity. So so here's the next part, the, the last part, the giving up. We're not going to keep guns out either. She just says, we're just going to give up. We can't do it. Americans are too incompetent, too weak, too, too not possible. Amer Americans can't do it. Her whole deal, you see this whole comment, this whole comment is designed to demoralize people. So my mom, right, suppose my mom is just curious. She's like a baby boomer, right? She, she doesn't know the internet. She's just like discovering Facebook for the, like that you can go past like your own page. She's just finding this out. <laughs> and she's like, oh, look at this local news station. And then she goes to this local news station and she goes, oh, yeah, look at this story. Doesn't click on the story. She just reads the headline. And then she looks at the comments. And they're filled. They're filled with people like this demoralizing the United States. So what happens? My mom then, I talk to, I start talking to my mom, and my mom says, oh, it doesn't matter. Both sides are corrupt in, anyways. We, we, nothing we do matters anyways. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter if I vote. Like, it's all corrupt. Like, there's no way we can know. So my mom becomes demoralized. That's the whole point of them doing it. They have entire fucking divisions of cyber armies in Russia devoted to do exactly this. Exactly. They did it in 2016. They never stopped. Why would they stop? It worked last time. They never stopped. Never stopped. So, so here I am, right? I already know. I already know. I already know. I already know. I can see, I can see trolls real easy. I can see Russians real easy. So, or if they're not Russians, then they're infected by Russians. They're demoralized. So I go, all right, well, what's wrong with Americans that they're the only country who can't deal with guns, right? No other country has regular mass shootings like we do. Maybe if you live in a war-torn country, but that's because you're war-torn. Are we war-torn? <laughs> so, so... Mexico gets its guns from USA. If USA didn't give Mexico guns, they wouldn't have any. So what's the deal with, with Americans? Why can't they handle their gun problems? I know the answer. The answer is white supremacy. But I want to see what she says. And it, so she says, yes and no. Because she wants, she's trying to convince me of her side, right? She wants to demoralize me. She doesn't want to drive me away. She, her point is to demoralize me, and she sees that I'm not on board. So, but she doesn't understand that I'm, I'm like a, like, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm dressed in a little burlap bag, right? I'm like, oh, but like acting as if I don't know what's going on. So I'm just asking questions. Oh, wise little person, why can I just 
poke holes in your little thing here. Please instruct me. Poke, poke, poke. So this person doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't know that I'm like I'm actually. Like, she has no idea. <laughs> so so she's trying to convince me. So she's like yes and no. Guns and oh yeah yeah yeah. So again, she's she's gonna try to work her magic, her demoralization magic. Guns and drugs come into Mexico, and she's saying sorry again, Mexico, that she is blaming you, but she's not sorry. <laughs> and then she throws in China and other countries, right? So she's saying guns come in from Mexico and China. Guns come in to the United States from other countries. That's like smuggling no coal into Newcastle. <laughs> That'd be like drug smuggling drugs into Lao. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But and then, again, she does the thing, give up. She's like, the bad guy's... Always find a way. So don't even try anything because you're going to lose no matter what. The whole point of this, remember, is demoralization. She's, it's, it's, demoral, it's an actual real program that the Russians run on the Americans, and it really, really works. You want to know how it works? You want to know how I – okay, okay, so I, I – I, you say, I turn it back. I say, so what's wrong with Americans that they can't deal with their gun issue? They're the only country with a gun problem. You tried to blame Mexico and China, but I'm asking you, what's wrong with Americans? And and as long as you bring it back and focus, they, they can't go anywhere. Because it, it always comes back to white supremacy every time. So what do you mean? How can I say that this is a problem? How can I say that this is an issue? How can that even be possible? Guys, it ends up like this. It ends up like this. Where, where baby boomers who are isolated and alone sit and watch Fox News 24-7 became, become brainwashed and will kill any black people that they see for the tiniest of infraction. For the tiniest of infraction. He didn't, the, this black kid didn't come like egging the guy's house. He didn't throw eggs at it. He didn't have toilet paper. He wasn't baking on the windows. He wasn't pissing on the fucking doormat. He wasn't like uprooting the guy's like lawn stuff. He wasn't like destroying his property. He wasn't doing a goddamn thing. He he knocked on the door of the and of the wrong house. Knocked on the door. Maybe checked. The, and you know what? Because, and I remember as a kid, I remember as a kid, sometimes houses have a door, like a screen door or another door, and inside there's another door. So, like, so if you knock on the screen, they may not hear it. And, of course, how many times have you pressed the buzzer on someone's uh, doorbell and it doesn't work? All the time. All the time I press the buzzer and it doesn't work. But you can't hear it, so you don't know if it doesn't work. Way better just to knock on the door. <laughs> but you can't knock on the door because there's a screen. So if you knock on the door, they're not going to hear it. Or maybe they're not. So what do you do? You, op you open the screen so you can knock on the door inside, the inside door. Oh, like, right? Rational, rational. But this guy pro hopped up on propaganda fed to him by Fox News by, a, by an Australian billionaire in cahoots with Vladimir Putin. Made him so paranoid and crazy, fed with his own internal racism, that he shot a black kid. He just fucking shot him. That's what this is about. It's not just harmless Facebook trolls. It's part of a larger, uh, larger front to attack democracy and attack our multiracial democracy. Like, I'm not crazy. Institution! You're the one who's crazy. Institution! You're driving me crazy. Institution! <laughs> right, right, right? Someday, more Americans will realize it. But Jared Kushner which is Donald Trump, Elon Musk, <laughs> Vladimir Putin, and Donald Trump are all on the same team. That's the same team that attacked us on 9-11. On, on They're all on the same team. They're all on the same team. They're all against multiracial democracy. 
They're all on the same team. Man, I'm so... Okay, get coffee. <laughs> I'm so tired. Get coffee! Bound, but I bound, bound. <laughs> I told you it was a long week, right? I told you, I told you, I told you. Oh, my God. Keep it going. It's hot. Keep it going. You know what? It's so funny. I can stream. I can stream this show for hours, and, like, nobody comes by. No one cares. Or maybe they... <laughs> All right. Okay. Um. I can stream this show for hours and no one comes by. They're all in on it. So, I don't know if you know, but... But Elon Musk has officially destroyed, like, officially gotten rid of the name Twitter. Twitter as a company no longer exists. It has been absorbed into something called X Corp. So X Corp, he says, this is this is Elon Musk. This is a cartoon by Dave Garland, Granlund, Granlund. X Corp should be a f arena for free speech, he says, right? And who, is, who are the people that he lets on to, to Twitter? He lets on Donald Trump, who uses it for insurrection. He uses it, he gives it to Mohammed bin Salman, who murders journalists. I don't know who that guy is, but he looks like a dictator. I think that's like the uh, Hungary guy, uh, who's a dictator. Uh, he gives it to uh, uh, Kim Jong-un. He gives it to white supremacists. He gives it to Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's an insurrectionist. He gives it to Donald Trump Jr., Vladimir Putin, I don't know who that guy is, but he looks evil. <laughs> and he kicks me off. Ah! <laughs> that tells you who it's for. It's not. It's not for for. Uh, it's not for anti-fascists. It's for fascists. <laughs> Stand your ground laws. Um. Remember, stand your ground laws are, are, are bullshit. They're just legalized murder. And it's funny in the Yankees spot area that it's that they they've managed to like uh, to uh, to either make it duty to retreat or castle doctrine. But in every other state, <laughs> if you feel you're okay to be there, you're able to kill someone and get away with it. <laughs> Do you see how white supremacy? And and guns are tied together innately, historically, in every way. Like the the, the Confederate Republic requires guns to to survive. It requires violence. So in the United States, so far, this is from Meg La, Meglav, D.C. So far this week. Teens have been shot for three reasons. Pulling into the wrong driveway. So, <laughs> some someone, uh, there was a, a young woman who was dropped off at the wrong house. <laughs> and she was just dropped off at the wrong house. And the person who owns the house shot and killed her. Because she's at the wrong house. She didn't do anything wrong. She didn't, like, destroy property. She didn't bang on the windows. She didn't, like, threaten anyone. She didn't scream. She wasn't, like, trying to break in. None of that. None of that. She was just being a normal person. But this dude, who knows what this dude was on? Who knows what this guy was watching? But this dude, because he had a fucking gun, was able to kill her. For nothing, for nothing, from far away too, because she offered no threat. It wasn't like she was in his face and he had to use a knife or something. She was far, far away, had nothing to do with him, and she, and he killed her. Why? Because guns are so fucking available in our country. So a teen died because she was dropped off at the wrong house. All right, another teen was shot because he rang the wrong doorbell, and a, and a guy had been watching Fox News all his life, like, shot through the door and, and almost killed him. <laughs> and then another teen went, like, got out of, like, the store or something, and then, like, she went to the car, right? 
cars look similar, dude. Cars look similar. And then she went to the wrong car, a car that looked like the car she was getting into, went and opened it and got in and was like, oh, shit, this is the wrong fucking car. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> and she was like, oh, 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 I'm out of here. And she closed the door and she went back over to her car. The guy from the car there got out of his car with his gun, walked over to the car that she went into and fucking killed her and shot her. And I don't know if he killed her, but he probably killed her. Because she went in the wrong car by accident and took nothing and left right afterwards. A car that was unlocked, by the way. It wasn't like she broke in. See, these are the reasons why we need to get rid of, we need to deal with our gun problem. But white supremacy, white supremacists, the Confederate Republic does not want to because their entire existence is predicated upon the violence afforded to them by the firearm. Historically, historically, manifest destiny could not have happened without the firearm. Yeah, it doesn't seem like freedom when you can get randomly killed by someone. Randomly. And you can do nothing about it. Doesn't feel like freedom, does it? Feels like tyranny. Doesn't feel like freedom when your government ah, totally ignores you. <laughs> doesn't feel like freedom when it, your government totally ignores you and your local government. Not just you and your voters, the majority, but also your local government officials, too. When they do that, it feels like, that doesn't feel like a representative democracy. It feels like tyranny. Like in ten, That's what they're doing in Tennessee. And they admitted it in their own voice. They admitted it, that they have a confederate republic that they're trying to give birth to, which is diametrically opposed to the United States. So here's another way of finding out. <laughs> Social security fun facts. Social security and Medicare paid for with a separate tax. They add nothing to the national debt. Right. The, the Social security does not add to the debt. Zero. Zero money to debt. It is funded entirely by people working and then paying into a fund. Entirely. Entirely. That's in the entirety of it. It's funded by people working. That's how it's funded. It's not, there's zero debt to it. Social Security has a 2.5 trillion surplus. Congress has borrowed trillions from Social Security to pay for government spending. So when Republicans say we need to cut Social Security in order to balance the federal budget, here's what they really mean. We've taken trillions from Social Security to pay for unfunded wars, tax cuts for the rich, and corporate subsidies. We need to cut your benefits so we won't have to pay it back. Fact. It's the truth. It's the truth. The whole reason why we're having this, this debt ceiling fiasco right now is because... Republicans cut taxes for the wealthy in 2018. That's why we don't have enough money for the government anymore. I I like I have a whole graph about it, dudes. Oh, that's archive. Where's local? 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 Where'd my local go? Oh, shit. What happened, dude? What happened? Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. Local, local taxes. There it is. Oh, tax. Yeah, ta-da! So, here's what taxes looked like under Eisenhower. 1950s. Effective tax rate under 1950s. It was progressive. The 
The less money you had, the less taxes you paid. The more money you had, the more taxes you paid. Until you got to the ridiculous amount of money, then you paid a, a ton of taxes, like 70%. Like that 70 percent that funded the interstate highway system that tax system however when when republicans took trifecta when they in in 2018 they had total control of the government the house the senate and the presidency they changed the tax code to effectively give the top richest people the lowest tax rate in the entire country They did so by defunding the IRS. If the IRS has no tax agents, then they can't go after the rich people who hide their tax money. If you can't go after the rich people who hide their tax money, the U.S. government doesn't get funded. So why can't we have nice things? Because the, the, the white supremacists have stopped taxing rich people. Fact. All right, let's keep going here. Keep on trucking. Real quick. Remember how I told you last week how Clarence Thomas is is owned by by uh, that billionaire Harlan Crow, who's a white supremacist? For 30 years, he's just not disclosing his, his stuff. How Harlan Crow owns the house where, where the mom of Clarence Thomas lives. Yeah, you would think that would be an ethics violation, right? An ethics thing. Well, Supreme Court Justice John Roberts doesn't, doesn't care. Unelected politician who fancies himself a ruler rejects Senate request that he testify before representatives of the people he's supposed to serve about the ethics scandals he has chosen to facilitate. He's, he's like, oh, I don't want to testify about it. Like, I'm not going to do anything about the fact that Clarence Thomas is corrupt. I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm not going to institute a minimum standard of ethics. I'm not going to do a goddamn thing and you can't make me. Because I'm the Supreme Court Justice. Installed by W. Bush, who was installed by a coup. <laughs> Do you see how it's all like tied together? Man, it's a big long thing. It's 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 like it's been going on for ah years. Going on for years. Nay, centuries. It's been going on for centuries. Let's be real. Dope. That tells you the Supreme Court is illegitimate <laughs> and that the Republicans are corrupt. If, if, the, if the Republican guy, who is the leader of the court, doesn't care that another Republican guy is taking bribes from a, a Republican billionaire, <laughs> that tells you that their rulings are not really legit. They're not really about justice, but about Republican interests. Cops killed toward to Tortuga, Tiga. Police shot a protester in Atlanta 57 times, purportedly in response to a gunshot that the official autopsy concludes was never fired. The cops immediately said that he sh that that Tortuga shot first, and that in response the cops shot him. But the autopsy finds that dude had no ha no res gun residue on his on his hands. You get gun residue if you shoot a gun with your hands. He had it, but he had bullet wounds. Of his hands being up and them shooting through it. So after after this happened, all the cops said, oh yeah, he had a gun and he shot at us first. Motherfuckers, he had his hands up and you shot through them. Defund the police. Cop City should never, ever, ever exist. Cop City is, is basically a, a blood city. It's literally a necromancy city. You killed someone to build it. You basically used the life force of someone to build your cop city. It should never exist. And who do cops serve? White supremacy. It all comes back to the same thing, guys. Oh, yeah, here, Russian Red Brigades. That's right. I wasn't making it up, right? Russian Red Brigades 
Are state-sponsored anonymous internet political commenters and trolls linked to the government of Russia? Participants report that they are organized into teams and group of commenters that participate in Russian and international political blogs and internet forums using sock puppets, social bots, and large-scale orchestrated trolling and disinformation campaigns to promote pro-Putin and pro-Russian propaganda. Uh, let's see. Kremlin trolls are closely tied to the Internet Research Agency, a St. Petersburg-based company run by Yevgeny Yev, 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 Prig, Prigozhin, who is a close ally to Vladimir Putin and the head of the mercenary Wagner Group. Oh, dude! So that Prigozhin guy, dude, that Prigozhin is like literally the dude funding the war or doing the war in Bakhmut right now. He's the dude sending convicts to die en masse in Bakhmut. Oh, yeah, he's super evil. So the, the, the super evil dude, general dude, killing people in Bakhmut is also the guy who send, sends Russian troll, bot ar- Russian troll armies to infect the internets of the United States. And it's a real thing, dude. It's a real thing. Oh, yeah, here's that Mr. Lester guy. He's the guy. Mr. Lester lives in a modest beige house outfitted with surveillance cameras. Though city data shows there's relatively little crime in his quiet neighborhood near the northern edge of Kansas City. Neighbors say that his wife was recently moved to a nursing home, leaving him alone in his house. He spent considerable time at home in, in a living room chair watching conservative news programs at high volume. He brain he was brainwashed into paranoia to kill to to kill his his fellow American. That's what Russian Russian trollbot armies do. That's the whole program of 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 um of of active measures. Yuri Bezmenov told you himself that was what they were trying to do. That I mean, look what it happens. That's what it happens. That's the whole thing, dude. You're watching it happen. So who are the so they're all on the same team, the 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 oh shit hold on. I missed. <laughs> Feather fall for the win. They're all on the same team. Putin, Erdogan, uh, the guy from or- Orban, Orban, the guy from Hungary, uh. The Republicans, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, Kim Jong Un, President Xi of China, um, Donald Trump, uh, Rupert Murdoch, Australian billionaire. They're all on the same team, even though they're all, even though it's international. I, I'm like, damn, dude, that's international from all different countries. How could they be on the same team? They're all on the same team because their team is fascism. So Tommy Douglas, once more, let me remind you what fascism is. I need not wear a brown shirt or a green shirt. Fascism begins the moment a ruling class, fearing the people may use their political democracy to gain economic democracy, begins to destroy political democracy in order to retain its power of exploitation and special privilege. privilege. And that's exactly what's going on in Tennessee. As the people demand political uh, democracy, the the, the uh, Confederate Republic uses its power to squash it, to retain its power, its its special privileges, its privileges of exploitation. Because remember, the Confederacy is the slaver republic. They're slavers. They want to slave people. They want to turn people into slaves. They objectify human beings. They're the worst kind of like person there is. Slavers are the worst kind of people there are. They literally want to enslave their fellow human beings and turn them into objects. That's what we have inside of us in the United States. We have the worst people. <laughs> Slavers. For example, in Florida, 
Florida prosecutor Jack Campbell has a racism policy in his Jefferson County office instructing prosecutors to make more punitive plea bargain bargains against Hispanic people. It's it's hung up. They're hanging up in the office. So th this thing is is like a, is like a flow chart of how his office handles plea deals like to people right because there's a lot of there's a big office he, he needs to like process a lot of claims a lot of like cases so th this this is like a shortcut if the guy has no criminal history you want to send the person into diversion you don't want to get him locked up in in like in like probation or into the criminal justice system you want to get him like in a program that makes him not want to come back it, but if the guy has a limited criminal history, he's already fucked up before. Then diversion didn't work. Then you want to withhold him, and then you and then you um, add costs. But if the dude has extensive criminal history, or if the dude's a criminal, right? The dude's messed up a bunch of times, or if he's brown, then you give him really real hard. You you do real bad stuff you give him the worst so being brown is a bad thing in jefferson county if you're being caught being brown that automatically associates you with extensive criminal history automatically it doesn't matter if you have no criminal history it doesn't matter if you've never ever fucked up before it doesn't matter it doesn't matter to these guys the only thing that matters to this this people here is the color of your skin. If you're brown, you get the worst punishment. It's codified. They fucking wrote it down. In what kind of government does being brown equal being a criminal? A white supremacy government, the Confederate Republic, of which Ron DeSantis is a member. He's transformed large swaths of Florida into de facto control of the confederate republic and not the united states it's against the law in the united states to give harsher punishment to a class of people based on the color of their skin it's against the law in america in the united states but in in the confederate republic it's standard practice it's codified they write that shit down i want you to have a clear understanding of of the the maggot that lives inside the United States, the botworm, the botworm larvae that lives inside of us. It's a botworm larvae that we have to get rid of. And I don't know how we're going to do it. It causes a lot of pain and infection and suffering. But we got to get rid of it. It's a botworm larvae. We can't just ignore it, dudes. We can't just like, pretend it's not there. It is the source of a fuck ton of our problems. It's a botworm larvae. Fox is in the lying business. Alex Jones was ordered to pay half a billion dollars for his Sandy Hook lies, and it has no observable effect on the media ecosystem, despite putting a very high price on lying. The problem is that the profit from lying is even higher than the price. That's right. Did Alex Jones stop? No, dude. He keeps going because the money he makes lying is greater than the money he has to pay out to the to the system. Paying out for his lies is just a cost of business. He makes more money of, by by continuing his lies than he does by altering by stopping. Same thing with Fox News. Even though they had to pay out almost a billion dollars because they lied about Dominion, they're not going to stop lying. They have to keep lying. That's their whole business model. Think of a bar that suddenly has to pay an alcohol tax for the first time. The bar owner is not going to be deterred from selling alcohol just because there's a tax on it. Bars are in the alcohol business. Without alcohol, there is no bar. Fox is in the lying business. This is from Carolyn Orbueno, PhD. The deterrence model just doesn't work with Fox News. If Fox stops lying, they will cease to be Fox. And even if they have to pay a massive lying tax, they know they'll make up for it in profit by lying. It's the truth.
so uh, the GOP debt ceiling plan, the Republicans, uh, they control the House of Representatives. So the House of Representatives is in charge of passing a budget for the United States. So far, 100 days in, the, the Republicans haven't passed a budget yet. And in fact, they haven't even figured out a way to – they haven't even agreed to pay for the bills that they've already incurred. So the United States has had to do a bunch of stuff in order to like not default, and we're gonna have to shut down if the, if we keeps going this way. Why? Why? Why can't the Republicans pa like pay our bills and pass a budget? That's like basic government stuff. Why can't you do it? Well, because the, there's the plan. The Republicans have a plan. The plan is to cut taxes on the rich, and then you refuse to pay the bills. Ta-da! Remember, I already showed you. I already showed you that one thing where where they made billionaires pay the lowest tax ever in the entire country. That means we have a big debt. And now that the debt, the bill came due, Republicans are saying, "Yeah, we're not going to pay the debt unless you agree to to stop to to cut Social Security." So they want Joe Biden and the Democrats to agree to cut Social Security in exchange for Republicans passing a budget. And and paying the bills. That's not that's not a that's not a, a negotiation. That's a hostage situation. Republicans are literally holding the American people hostage for demands that they couldn't get through the normal government process. Why? Why would why would why would a group like that do that to, to us? Why would they do that? Oh, because they're the Confederate Republic. That's why. You started to get it now. You start. You start to see it now. Are you, are you starting to like get the contours of of the Confederate Republic? I'm not making it up, guys. You see it too. You have to see it too. I'm not making it up. So leaving a meeting in Speaker McCarthy's office, Freedom Caucus Chairman Scott Perry warned that the House GOP's debt ceiling plan, if it's going to pass, it's going to have to include a repeal of the Inflation Reduction Act. Why? It's the biggest investment in the USA since the 1950s. Why would you want to repeal a bipartisan plan that already got passed? That you can't repeal on your own because you don't have the votes for. Why? Why? <laughs> if, if you could do it on your own, you wouldn't need to include it as, as a hostage situation. Why, why do you need to do it like that? You see? It's because it helps Americans. And they don't want that to happen. Republicans only want to help the elite. Because that's only who they represent. They don't represent the people of America. They don't, they don't even represent their constituents. They only represent the white supremacist elites. They're literally a government inside of our government. They're a shadow government. They're literally a shadow government, a society inside of us. They're a bot worm maggot eating us. we got to get rid of it. Like, I, I need to pull up a, a picture of a bot worm. Okay, here's an example of the damage that Donald Trump has done. Remember when Donald Trump – okay, so, yeah, like, God, I told you there's a lot of stuff, and, like, I'm dying here. <laughs> Not, so, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is going to be f four hours. I got to be finished by – in, like, I got to finish in, like, a half hour. Okay. Remember how Donald Trump is being sued – by the state of of New York for 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 lying on his on his business forms. Well, Donald Trump has allies in in the federal government. His name the ally is named Jim Jones. He's the from or, uh, Ohio. Jim Jones back in the day was the 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 director for the the uh, athletic department of the university in Ohio. And a coach there was a guy there molesting the boys the the kids at in his department. But Jim Jones covered it up <laughs> instead of like getting the guy in, in in trouble. Because remember, using your in in the Confederacy. It's a perk to be able to use your superior power to make your subordinates give you sexual favors. It's a perk. So Jim Jordan, instead of exposing the people who did this, Jim Jordan covered it up and was rewarded with being a, a U.S. representative 
for the Confederacy. Okay, Jim Jordan now is the chairman of a committee called the Weaponization of the U.S. Government. Jim Jordan is using his power of subpoena to subpoena the prosecutors of Donald Trump in New York. Why would you need to subpoena the prosecutors of, of New York? It's it's a state level issue, dude. It's got nothing to do with you. Why would you need to do that? There's like no point. There's like nothing. You invented stuff. You shouldn't even be looking at it. <laughs> like, don't you have better things to do? And the answer is no, because the entire point of that of Jim Jones or or uh, 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 Jim Jordan is to serve Donald Trump and to protect Donald Trump. So his weaponization committee is only exists to serve Donald Trump. So, so the subpoena only serves Donald Trump. Whatever information he gets out of the, the prosecutor would only be used to help Donald Trump avoid accountability in New York. That's the only reason. But remember, Donald Trump, remember after when Obama was president, he could not get any judges uh, – uh, uh, confirmed any federal judges confirmed because the Senate controlled by Mitch McConnell wouldn't confirm anything. So there was a massive, massive backlog of people who needed to be confirmed by the time Obama stopped being president. Well, guess what? Donald Trump got to fill all those president, all those just judges with his people. So the judgeship is filled with Donald Trump uh, traitors <laughs> with bad judges. One of those bad judges was in Florida. Her name was Eileen Can uh, Cannon. Eileen Cannon was the one that delayed the Mar-a-Lago investigation. Remember when Donald Trump stole secrets from the United States and kept them in Mar-a-Lago? <laughs> well, the Department of Justice kept asking for him to give them back, and he, and he, he wouldn't do it. So they had to get a search warrant to finally go get him. Well, now the, 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 the Department of Justice wants to prosecute Donald Trump, but Donald Trump was saying, no, you can't do that. I was president, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm immune. Well, the court case went to, to his, his lucky judge, Eileen Cannon, and Eileen Cannon delayed that whole thing for a super, super long time. That's why we're not hearing anything about it, because it went in front of his judge. Well, lucky, lucky Donald Trump, same thing happened in New York. When Jim Jordan subpoenaed the prosecutor from New York to come testify, the the aide, the attorney general of New York is like, no, fuck that. We're not going to come do that. Fuck your noise. We're not doing it. So he sued. He countersued Jim Jordan saying, fuck your noise. I'm taking you to court. You're not allowed to do this. Unfortunately, the case went before da -da -dum, Donald Trump's judge. But this time, the, the Donald Trump judge is named Vislia, Vi, uh, Visk Osil. Visk Osil. So, so right, of, right away, Judge Viscosil takes the side of Jim Jordan, which is Donald Trump's ally, and and kept interrupting um, Bragg, who is at the, um, New York. And she said, "Why is overseeing the use of federal money isn't a valid legislative valid legislative act? Because the intent is not to oversee." a good faith effort to oversee um, the expenditure of federal money, it's to get a peep into an ongoing investigation. It's the ongoing investigation that's the problem. <laughs> but she's obtuse about it, right? <laughs> after after Botros says that Rep. Jordan's probe is trying to intimidate the DA's office, the judge snaps. That's your interpretation of it. No, that's not my interpretation. Of it. That's literally what it's for. That's literally what it's for. The judge is a very is very friendly to Donald Trump, so she's going to take whatever interpretation of it is most friendly to Donald Trump, just like Eileen Cannon did. Same thing, same thing. So she said, "There's no, there's." Polit so, so listen, there, there, there's both sides, right? There's politics going on here on both sides here. Let's be honest about it. That's the Trump judge saying it. Trump judge is trying to say that, that the prosecution of Donald Trump is purely political. That the only reason why New York is going after Donald Trump is for politics. But we know that's not true. Donald Trump already admitted to it on camera. What did he say? What did what did he say? What did he, I gotta write it down? I got I, I should look for the video of him saying it. But but what he said was on purpose. He he tells the government on his tax forms that all oh, my properties are so bad that they're underwater and I, I I'm making no money in my properties. I can't you can't tax me on them because they're not they're worth List. You can't tax me. Sorry, sorry, government. I can't pay any taxes. And then he turns around to a bank 
And for the same properties that he told the government that was worthless, he tells the bank, God damn, these are worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. They're, they're so they're so worth they're worth so much money. It's it's absurd that I even have to like ask you for money. Oh my god, they're so they're worth so much money. So I'm gonna put these really, really expensive buildings as collateral for this loan that I'm taking out from the bank. And the bank's like, oh okay. So he tells two different stories to two different groups. He tells the government that his properties are worthless, so he pays nothing on taxes. Then he tells the banks that his properties are really, really expensive, so he can use them as collateral to take out huge loans to go do whatever else he wants. So that's that's called fraud. That's lying, dude. You're lying. You lied. That actually happened. That actually happened. But the judge that's been bought off by Donald Trump is trying to say, oh, that's kind of political. <laughs> that, that, that whole thing's political, that Donald Trump didn't pay the state of New York it, the, the fair value of his, of his properties, and you have it on, on paper. That's political. It's a political – you can take that. You can make a political interpretation of that. What? No, you can't. But this judge is corrupt. So she is going to make this – at prosecutor come before Jim Jordan so Jim Jordan can can make a news clip of him exercising of yelling at this prosecutor Jim Jordan he doesn't care if it's what context right he doesn't care if he's out of context whatever because what's going to happen while he's yelling at this guy is that a camera is going to take a picture of him while he's yelling looking strong and powerful and he wants to make the prosecutor look weak and feckless and then they're going to take this clip out of context and broadcast it on Tucker Carlson so Tucker Carlson would make disinformation out of this and broadcast it to his people to make them very angry. Like, oh, yeah, they're totally going after Donald Trump with a political prosecution. And what happens when you when you mislead them, your, your, your audience of elderly people? They fucking go nuts and they'll do violence because they're brainwashed by all the lies you've been feeding them nonstop forever and ever. Oh, my God. Okay. Woo. <laughs> okay, where am I? Where am I? I only have, like, how much time? 15 minutes. Fox News, trust, trust, trust. Social Security, stand your ground. Steps to the Capitol. I, I think they covered it. When do I become a threat? At what age does does a black person become a threat? <laughs> In white supremacy uh, controlled republic, confederate republic, a black person is always a threat. Remember, Tamir Rice is like was 12 years old when the police killed him in like less than a second. They just straight up fucking murdered a, a 12 year old kid because they looked at him as a threat. Why would you look at a fucking 12 year old kid as a threat? And when you're a police officer with a gun, holy fuck, it's because the system has made your brain, has rotted your brain to, to associate with it. Like, white supremacists want to say, oh, we're just Pontius Pilate. We wash our hands of it. It's the system that does it, and we're not going to talk about the system. Yeah, because it's a white supremacist system. You're, you're, you're a confederate republic. It's literally what it is, a confederate republic that you, want, that you don't want to acknowledge or talk about. Oh, yeah, the Judge Vissosil. Yeah, is is bought and paid for. <laughs> My brain. Don't even say shit. Just let it go. It's not worth it. My mouth. <laughs> Listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> An Oklahoma newspaper secret recording prompts calls for officials to resign. The audio featured an official talking about hanging black people and other officials speaking of hiring hitmen for two reporters, the newspaper said. The sheriff's office claims the recording violated state laws. So, so get this, in Oklahoma, a bunch, of peop a bunch of sheriffs were standing around talking to one another, saying how they hate reporters that serve democracy and how they want to hang black people. 
<laughs> and then they they played this recording, and instead of being ashamed about it, being oh shit, we got caught by our with our racism and our evilness. Instead of saying that, they're they're leveraging the state. They're saying, oh, we're gonna use the system to say that recording is illegal. <laughs> you can't use. The, you made you you broke the law to make that recording, and we're gonna come get you for breaking the law, motherfuckers. You were talking about like murdering people, <laughs> but do you see how they they put it off on they they're, they're, they they Pontius Pilate uh, Pilate the, the 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 issue. They put it on the government instead. I know where two big deep holes are if you can ever need them, Mr. Jennings said on the recording, according to the transcript. The sheriff responded, I've got an excavator. Mr. Jennings replied, well, these are already pre-dug oh, to bury bodies, dude, to bury bodies. At another point, according to the transcript, Mr. Jennings said, I've known two or three hitmen. They're very quiet guys. Yeah, Mr. Manning responded. And they would cut no mercy, Mr. Jennings said, adding an ex expletive. So in Oklahoma, you have sheriff's officers, sheriffs, going around talking about killing people, reporters, and hanging black people. That's like systemic racism. It's there. It's literally the Confederate Republic. And remember, they're there to protect privilege, special privilege, where uh, a guy in power can use his power to extract sexual favors from a subordinate and get away with it. It's part of the privilege. That's what they represent, the Confederacy, which is not the United States. I'm trying to create a, a clear divide in your mind between woke and United States together and Confederacy and fascism together. Those two cannot coexist. Woke and the United States together, Confederacy and fascism together. Those two cannot exist. They're, they're like matter and antimatter. They can't touch each other. That's why we're having the problems here. The, 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 the great white botfly larvae that's eating us right now inside is, is the, the Confederate Republic racism, fascism. Okay, what have we got? Okay, chat. Proud boy chat. Conspiracy. Yeah, now, now we'll talk about it. Pessoa. Life is an experimental journey undertaken involuntarily. It is a journey of the spirit through the material world. And since it is the spirit that travels... It is the spirit that is experienced. I could say a lot about that, but I don't have time. First rule of Thesaurus Club. You don't talk, discuss, converse, speak, chat, confer, confer deliberate, gab, or gossip about Thesaurus Club. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for me, I think. I covered a lot because there's a lot going on, dude. I told you there's a lot going on. I'm trying to coalesce it, right? I'm trying to get it all in one episode. Coalesce the gigantic thing that I've been working on for five years. Like this thing happened to us and it's, we're in danger of it happening again is what I'm trying to tell you. And we have a dream. We have a goal. The dream is multiracial democracy. And our enemy is clear. It's the white, great white bot larvae that's eating us from inside the Confederate Republic. It's real and it's there. Acknowledge it so you can start to defend yourself against it. Okay, America. Until next time. Peace. Pogo Kiddo out. Ooh. Stop.